Everybody, what's up? Are we live? Can you see us? Can you hear us? Can you feel us? Is anybody out there? <laughs> yes, there you are. Hey, welcome to episode 30. Christ, 30. It's actually 21, 29. One got postponed, but I wasn't going to go back and change all the thumbnails. So it's episode 30 of what you listen to. It's going to be a great show tonight. I can feel it. It will be a great show. Uh, Charles is back. How you doing, Charles? Good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for coming on again. Thanks for taking time Thank out on Friday us. night. A busy schedule. Oh yeah, it's a, a, a real, real, uh, real barn burner that I'm missing tonight. So, uh... <laughs> Paul, good to see you again. Good to see you, Mike. Lovely to see you. And he's back, the piano man, Arty <laughs> <laughs> White. How you doing, Arty? Good to see you. I'm doing well, thank you. Fresh it's back, good. fresh back from tour. Well, tour is pretty grandiose. It was four days, but it four was good. Trip. Yeah. Good. A little potted history of the four days. Any highlights? Any lowlights? I mean, the highlight was opening up for Dark Angel, which was pretty pretty wild. Um, the the lowlights were, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of interband diarrhea, uh, <laughs> various various digestive issues that manifest in the van. I don't miss that. Inter Interband diarrhea, like you guys would just pass it back and forth between each other. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a doctor, um, but that's my. It's my assumption. The sights, the sounds, the smells. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's a real All right. Roll. My yeah. wife's like, you can you can hook up with a groupie if you want, you know. And I'm like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of groupies at the ready for death shows. <laughs> 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 so, but I did I did keep that in my pocket. Nice. All right, let, let me just let, let me get the housekeeping done. Like and subscribe. There we go. Let's see if the chat's open and let's see if, if anybody's in the chat yet. Oh Jesus, it's it's rocking tonight with Derek. Oh. <laughs> Derek's in the chat. <laughs> I didn't tell them anything about the pills. No, so no, didn't, 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 didn't different, Derek. <laughs> different Derek. Different Derek. Yes, yes. They're never gonna find out. All right. Are you ready to rock? I'm ready to go. We've all got five records each. I'm looking forward to everyone's picks. We'll go around. Hey. There you go. Ahoy, <laughs> ahoy. Ahoy, sir. <laughs> there we go. All right, yep, we've got five each. We'll go around. <laughs> all right. uh, and uh, as usual, we're going to have a great time talking about 20 or more great records. So, shall we get going? Yeah. Cheers. 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 No one's Press. on the older Capo Cola this evening. All right. I don't have a short, sharp shock today, but I might have a shock. Uh, let me uh, let me set, set the scene here. So, uh, last week, I was... Uh, hanging around at the record shop, which uh, might come as a surprise to people watching. <laughs> and uh, I was at the record shop, so I thought I'd better look at the records. And I was in the metal section, that the new arrivals, and this thing just jumped out at me. I just had to have it. Hmm. I just had to have it. I set my eyes on it, my eyes on it. I just had to have it. Uh, the build-up is too much. <laughs> and, uh, ice was being made before we came on air. Very apt. This is a very icy, icy record. Uh -oh. You guys familiar with this bad boy? No. It Can you see it? Can you see it? Yeah, we're looking at uh, Persecutor. Persecutor with a K. And their first album, Permanent Winter, on Svart Records. Now, the reason I bought this is one, I mean, look at it. That's why I bought it. And two, the little description in Japanese said something like the Transylvanian Celtic Frost or something like that, which, hey, come on, you know, I'm in, I'm in. So I bought it, took it home, slapped it on the record player, and I was having a good time. Almost too good of a time. Like, it's a little bit party, you know? Oh. It's, it's not as uh, serious as I thought it was going to be, you know? It kind of huh. says Romanian, there you go, Romanian ice metal on the back. <laughs> totally Our favorite kind of metal. 
you know, we've got songs like. Is there a different a different uh, different recipe for ice in Romania? <laughs> Let's find out. Let's find out. Right. You know, you got songs like uh, "Chains to the Tundra," "Ice Wars," you know, "Frostquake." But I, as I was listening to this, I was kind of rocking out and thinking, I don't know about this. I'm a little bit suspicious of these guys. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to check them out on the old Discogs, right? So I looked him up, up on Discogs, and we had, like, Vlad the Inhaler. I was like, yeah, he sounds Romanian. He could be from Romania, right? And then we had the Iron Slasher. The Iron Slasher. I was like, yeah, he sounds like a Romanian dude. And uh, who else do we have? Uh, <laughs> one more dude. Ah, yes. Scott Batiste. Oh, he was never from him. And I was like, hang on a minute. These guys are not from Transylvania. <laughs> what? I, uh, yes. So I clicked on his name. Hey, you know who Scott Batista is, right? No. He played in he played in uh Yafet Koto. Oh. And like a band called The Heart of Snow, who are on like GSL. So it's like a San Diego guy? Like I think they're but they're from California. I'm not sure. Yeah. But they're not from Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what snow looks like. <laughs> so, so then I kind of started looking him up, and there's all these like videos, like on YouTube and stuff, that are hilarious. And especially the the, the best song on the album is like uh, "Black Death Punk Skins." That's oh. the that's the anthem from this record. So it's kind of like a party hellhammer is how I'm gonna uh, describe this record. Uh, but you know, I could get it. Pseudo Transylvanian. <sighs> But you know what? Some of them could be trapped from Romania, but just like living in California, right? So I'm not going to completely write that out of the equation. Sure. But, uh, we do live right. in a melting pot. You know, Vincent does make a good point that California is the Transylvania of the U.S. I would, go, I would say that's pretty fair. <laughs> I never thought of that. Lots of blood sucking going on out there. <laughs> yeah, that is a good point. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's just like ACDC meets Bathory or something like that. Uh, so yeah, but funny. I had a good time with it, and they've got a new record coming out, which is like the best title ever. It's coming out next month, I think. It's called Snow Business. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll definitely be definitely be picking that one up <laughs> when it when it comes out. Well, you're familiar with the uh, Frozen Soul, right? Yeah, that's like serious though. That's like b- bolt thrower, you know, bolt thrower. Right, right. Yeah. But they have that whole like everything is a, a pun or a you know, and they sell yes. the ice scrapers on their website, and, and, and uh, it's it's pretty genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this. Yeah, I like a the, good thing. Yes, Persecutor and uh, Frozen Soul should definitely do a split seven inch on ice white vinyl. <laughs> we should do it on a twenty sided die. <laughs> <laughs> to keep flipping it to hear each <laughs> be the uh Paul, it's the limited interest edition. Yeah, it's a limited interest edition. <laughs> That's my first pick of the day. Persecutor from Transylvania stroke Oakland or wherever they live in California. Kind of funny Transylvanian glacier. There you go. All right. That's my first pick of the day. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Charles, what's your first pick of the day? Well, anybody, I'm I'm a, a sucker for record clubs for some reason. I join them because I get a record every month of, or so that uh, of a band I never heard of. So I have, I have uh, joined the Sub Pop one for the last couple of years, Ooh. thinking that, you know, I'm going to get some good records. Uh, it's probably evens out to about one a year that I have any interest in. Um, the last eight or nine um, include Sylph, the William Loveday Intervention, Intention, Intention, Margarita Podridas, Is the Ron Del Pernell, <laughs> Zeal and Ardor. Oh, Zeal and Ardor. Uh, Zeal and Ardor? Wow. Barty Strange, Sydney Gish, and the one record that I was actually really interested in, KG Heine. Oh, so okay. He put out this record on Sub Pop as a Sub Pop uh, single for, I think it was 
2022's uh 2022's sub pop uh singles of the month club whatever it is um i really wanted to this like everything i've heard before <laughs> i really like and there are moments of it that are great but there are also moments of it that sound like i don't know if you gave my nephew a guitar an acoustic guitar and press play and record on a on a um cassette player be better right he could do better and i've heard better um the one thing that keeps me um satisfied about it is that it's probably going to be worth more than the whole 12 month subscription i paid for at some point um but i feel like he could have done better um but it's not terrible how's that um i know that we're supposed to come on here and talk about records we love but not it's more, this was more of what I wanted to hear for over the last couple of weeks, and it wasn't what I wasn't what I expected, but it wasn't a total disappointment. What I'm getting at is, don't jolt years worth of records for this one. If you can get it cheap, <laughs> go for it. Um, but his earlier works and his other works are much better. Um, he, so, uh, he has a lot of records out. His discography. I did look him up on Discogs just to kind of see what, where, where he started and where I kind of came in on him. Um, I think it was 118 releases at, at, at when I last looked. So, you know, he's you're not like going to bat a thousand. Like you're not, not going to bat a thousand. That's just, and, yeah. you know, while this isn't his, probably, it's, in the middle, probably, of what heard of his. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was hoping for something a little more. It's just acoustic guitar and um, it, it's like home recording quality. So maybe I'm think maybe I got it. I kind of had to hire, I was shooting higher, like, oh, this is sub pop. This is going to be like, uh, but it just sounds like he was, he kind of was like, the, it was a contractual obligation record. And, uh, but but he's not under contract, so he didn't need to do that. He could have he could have gotten gone a little deeper. <laughs> so my, that was my mm, pick. That's that's a cool pick. It reminded me of something like he has this. I don't know if you guys lip cream. You know the old like Japanese yeah. hardcore band. Yeah, like, yes. The drummer of that band had a, a band called Ogreish Organism, who are really good. They had like the guitarist of Death Side and stuff playing with them. They did one like one record with Keiji Heiner playing guitar on. But it's actually their worst record because <laughs> he has such I'm a different a theme. <laughs> yeah, he has such a different style. It's way it's very avant garde. Let's put it that way. Right, yeah. and I mean, avant garde in general for me is hit or miss. Mostly miss. <laughs> I don't fan of good. the genre, but I do like I do like some of this that he's done. So I wanted it to be good. I just I. It right. wasn't everything I, I wasn't everything I wanted it to be, but I'm picky. <laughs> you got to be picky these days, especially these days, you know. Right. Yeah. So maybe the Sydney Gish record's better. I don't know. I didn't listen to it yet. <laughs> I literally thought that half of those names that you were naming off are things that like, like we made up on a napkin one time when we were having pizza. Or no, yeah, these I, are actual. Yeah, those are like real bands. I knew, I knew, I knew yeah. that if I started reading them off, you would probably think I was making them up, but they're not. I'm not making them up. The only one I knew was Zeal and Arda, who are like that's the only weird, one I like, knew too. As I like said a, it, I was a, like, oh, you know, I yeah. heard this band before. Who are like a, a gospel and like metal mashup group from Europe. So, um, cool. it's funny that I picked this because when I picked it, I was kind of thinking about Diane Ferris who joined this because she was telling a story about mm. the first time she saw. Bauhaus, their first trip to America. Um, and uh, uh, I was wondering if she'd seen this band. And this Red Lorry, Yellow Lorry record is not their best. Although it is considered, it's called the Greatest Hits record, but it came out like after two records came out. And I think they have like six LPs. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think it has the hits on here, but I've just been spinning it a lot lately just because it has a, a standard beat. It's my, the fiscal end of the year for my work, so I just need something that I can zone out to. And it's a consistent drum beat through the whole thing. And this guy's voice just like, oh, ball, da, ball, ball, da, like just mumbling shit in the background. 
So it's a cross between um, not like a burp and a fart, like whatever Charles was just talking about, maybe a little higher level than that. But as far as like a greatest hits of a record, can you have two records out and have a greatest hits? Isn't it just like half the songs that are on both of the other two records? Um, Unless it's so, a 12. Yeah, and I think that that's when the third record came out. Good. So I highly maybe recommend it. No, I don't. I recommend it um, appropriately. And it's affordable. That's I, 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 I love that band. I have like the first three albums. I have like four or five yeah. albums singles by them. It's like yeah, you probably have the the two that all of these songs are taken yeah. from. If and I was more athletic, one. I would dive down and pluck them out, but I won't subject the viewers to my rear end. But <laughs> so, but yeah, great band. One of the best bands of the era with that like gothic, like post punk style thing they have, they have without going. overdoing it like the exactly. heavy almost like dance rhythms but didn't take it too extreme right. and then didn't go too far into like the weird like face paint and makeup and stuff they just walked the line perfectly yeah. which is why probably no one they're still like a little bit obscure because they never committed to either transylvania or disco so they're great i love that paint your wagon today. Paint Your Wagon is the LP that I would recommend if you want to get like a, a full length album. Weird. I know it's a weird, weird title. I know. Paint Your Wagon. <laughs> and I like yeah. the cover a lot. Two colors. <laughs> it's not if it's more than two colors, then uh, um, then you're paying more money. <laughs> That's a great band. I love that band. Red I, Lorry, I Yellow agree. Lorry, which is like a weird like tongue twister that you would try. People would make you try and say when you were like seven years old, right? Oh, thank you. Red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry. It's quite tough. Like, Wasn't it a game? Yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, and if you screwed up and you like went back to the start or whatever. Yeah. 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 Nice pick. RT. I have a question. What, who's serving Paul what? What do you get? What do you, who's over there with you? Oh, <laughs> Kim just brought He's some ice from your. Um, Thank you, Kim. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very nice. That's <laughs> all that ice one. Uh, I don't know. I haven't really thought about the order. I just grabbed a bunch of stuff that I've been cool. listening to. So I'll be a little. Go with it. Go with it. Uh, oh, okay. So this was recommended by like a non-punk friend of mine. He, you know, he comes over. He's a he's a, a buddy of mine. Our kids play together, but he's uh, he's more from like has an art background. Uh, and less of a, a punk rock, uh, hardcore background. And he's talking about music and when Sparks comes up and a few other bands come up and, uh, and he's like, uh, you ever hear the, uh, this band, the strip mall seizures. Ooh. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, no, I've never heard of them. And they're not on Spotify and they're not on, uh, there's like some, something on Bandcamp, but it's like a weird thing. And, and he's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta listen to this album. And he shows me a picture of it. And I'm like, Okay, well, I'm totally interested since it's not coming from like you know our world. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me check it out, and it's total like I guess it's like silk screen front and back. Uh, I guess the best way to describe it is like musically, sort of like a cross between you know that band Adult, that uh, sort of a post punk band that they're electronic. It's a male female duo, and she's got really sharp voice like this, like kind of like slits. Ish, but without all, without the, uh, without the dance, it's not dancey. It's more like popular, and it's and take that and cross it with World Inferno, Friendship Society, and uh, it's it's like very much like art school kids doing doing like synth wave slash accordion driven punk rock. Wow. So it's uh, and they you know it's totally like self released. It comes with a little zine, like a lyric booklet with like collage art, you know, like you would see in the 90s. But it came out in 2006. And uh, it's on their own label. It's on, well, there's a label here, but it's like True Panther Sounds. So I don't know what that is. But, Did you say uh, accordion driven? There's some accordion in there. Okay. There's, a, there's a lot of accordion in there. Which, when I listened to it first, I didn't notice because I just put it on and I went to work and I was listening to it and I was like, this sounds like adult. Then I put on my headphones and listened to it again because some of the songs really jumped out. And I was like, oh no, there's accordion. Oh no. But it, it ended up working. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, yeah, like, or a klezmer or one of the, I don't know. It was like not, not as like 
it wasn't as repulsive as you would think. So I was like, okay, this is all working. And, and the, the lyrics are very like post capitalist, you know, like, um, anarchist. Um, whoa, I just lost. Did Charles just leave? Or did yeah, he, he, uh, yeah, he had a bad uh, connection, I think. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, yeah, uh, it's called it's Strip Mall Seizures. It's a self-titled record. They have a few other things out, but it's mostly on CD and tape. And um, this uh, this was the uh, the first vinyl release. So I, I, I it was like one person had it for sale on Discogs. You couldn't find it anywhere else, so I snatched it, and uh, it was a very worthwhile purchase. Cool. It's uh, it's totally weird, and and um, you know just 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 has that that art school vibe that like nice. you know. Uh, not a lot of bands are doing this right now. That that kind of like very uh, like like outsider punk, mm. you know. Where did you say they were from? It, I don't know, but it appears they're from based on uh, they they mentioned the I can't remember the name of the place, but it was that place that burned down a few years ago in California during like a rave and killed a bunch of people. Uh, San Francisco oh. in Oakland, right? Yeah. So they they call out that venue in their thanks list, and that made me uh, think they must be from like San Francisco or surrounding area. But did they call out Gilman. No real info about anybody else in the band, so I can't can't figure it out. Which is another appealing thing. It's like they're in in in, in um, unwittingly mysterious. Like I don't think they just thought about how to how to promote themselves or anything, and they just came and went. But it's a it's really an interesting band. I think they could have been a lot more popular if they did more. Eggpunk might be the technical term. Eggpunk uh, is the thing people are saying. Yes. Okay. There you go. What is it called? Eggpunk. Eggpunk. <laughs> kind of like Devo esque punk. Does but, egg uh, stand for something? I don't Does know. It... We've we've kind of got into, into the weeds a little bit with this before on the show. It's like eggpunk and chain punk. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm. What is that? What's the egg? Are. What's the egg referring to? I, egg is more accordion driven, and chain punk is is more like just feather driven. And you got to decide right. which one came let's, first. Let's, let's the egg or the let's, chain. Yeah. Which what's the what what would the keytar driven ones be called? <laughs> on the tie or on the actual? <laughs> no, like the full on keytar, not on just the the tie guitar uh, keyboard. That's is that something else? Because that could be egg. That could be egg punk. Okay, could could be. It depends what the person's wearing while playing the guitar. Exactly. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Got it. I've heard egg punk <laughs> and chain punk up. before. <laughs> I've heard egg punk and chain punk before, but I'm. I guess I missed that. I missed yeah, that that uh, that window of time where I understood what it meant. We have no say in how language evolves anymore. We're we're too old. It's gone. Yeah, I yeah. I still don't quite get it, but uh, it's a nice term to throw out there that people mm-hmm. kind of seem to. Oh, okay, I get it. it. Sounds like it's Devo influenced, kind of right. It's basically what it means. I think. It's easier to or say Eggpunk now. than Devo influenced because yeah. everybody knows Eggpunk. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows Devo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. The question between Weird Al and Devo. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm getting chatty here. <laughs> yes. It's the egg, egg. All these eggs. I'm going to show you. <laughs> African music is a ridiculous thing to say. I, I've been really getting into African music for like the past like 10, 15 years. And I realized when I was saying it, I was like, that's just like saying, I like, you know, I like American music or I like European music. So it's, it's a very silly, silly thing to say. So I've got to be more specific and kind of learn a bit more about like the different, cause you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, but like, there's kind of like four countries that I've been kind of focusing on. Zambia is one of them, right? Zambia has like the Zam rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bands like Witch and the Ngozi family. That stuff's kind of more like Hendrix or like Cream influenced, like guitar rock like stuff. Yeah. Y- yeah, yeah. So I like a lot of that stuff. And then you've got like Kenya had so much good music like in the 70s. But Kenya's more like, I love like real like James Brown, like influenced like heavy funk. I like that stuff too. Analog Africa is the label to check out for like all these like uh, Kenyan compilations. And, and then you've got guess. Ethiopia. Oh, Ethiopia, right? With the Ethio, like jazz, there's a lot, which isn't really, it's kind of jazz, but it's not, it's its own thing. But then you've got Nigeria. And Nigeria has like the Afro beat, right? Which is like, you know, Fela Kuti, I suppose, is like the uh, the most famous person who ever did the Afro beat. But I got this band who don't play Afro beat, they play Afro rock, and it fucking kills. They've got, 
the band name isn't the best name. Do not be put off by the name of the band. <laughs> Talking about the Funkies. <laughs> Why not? Hey, hey, it's the Funkies. <laughs> hey, hey, it's the Funkies. <laughs> Man, this smokes like it's like it says. It's like the best of East Eastern Nigeria's Afro rock exponents, seventy three to seventy seven. So it's like all their singles that they released in uh, in Nigeria in the seventies. At some point, they kind of moved to England and made like two records in uh, in the UK. And then there's no like horns on this. There's well, there's a little a, a little bit on like maybe one or two songs. But it's all like drums, bass, guitars, and vocals. And it's not funky like awesome. James Brown. It's more like the Meters, you know, like that that kind of funk. That's cool. And the Meters is, is almost like Gang of Four in a way. That that kind of funk right it's like very different it's not james brown it's like not hot and sweaty it's kind of like a little bit angular very very cool band from like nigeria in the 70s that was cool it's great 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 record and there's one thing on here that kind of was the icing on the cake i mean i already love this record uh like the first time i played it i was like oh there's a song on here called breakthrough i know a band that has a song called breakthrough but it obviously it can't be the same song but it is, it's fucking, they covered Atomic Rooster. Because <laughs> Atomic Rooster have a song called Breakthrough, which they put out in like 1972. So this band from like Nigeria, like covered like Atomic Rooster on a, oh. on a seven inch, like back in like 72, 73. It's a pretty wild thing to do, I would say, you know. Yeah. It's interesting how music filtered from country to country and continent to continent in that period, you know. It is. I mean, Cream and like, uh, you know, Hendrix, I understand but like a band like atomic rooster like which is kind of a little bit obscure yeah how did they make it to like nigeria in like in the 70s and and was covered literally like less than a year after their record came out you know by a nigerian band that's wild this is a great great record if you're kind of a little bit afraid of like horns and like too much like james brown kind of stuff this is like totally different it's more kind of rock and heavier yeah, I'm gonna write that. It's down. great. So it's it's great. Stuff. It's really, really good. And it's like it's just a compilation, as I said, like with the Nigeria only like 45s. Great, great record. And you said Analog Africa is the label, or That's, uh, this one is actually on Soundway, which okay. is another label that puts out a lot of this kind of stuff. But if you want the Kenyan stuff, Analog Africa is the label to check out. But uh, this is on uh, Soundway Records. Came Excellent. out like ten years ago, but it just got repressed, so it's out there. It's out there. Hmm. The Funkies. Funkies. Dancing time. No horn <laughs> funk. Great stuff. <laughs> there you go. That's my second pick. All right. Charles, what's your second pick of the day? Hello? <laughs> um, <laughs> am I there? Am I here? Can you, you hear me? You are. I think you are. Yeah. Am I locked up? No. A little bit, but you're okay. good now. Are you? Yeah, you were before. Can you hear us? Okay. You're right. I can hear you. Just fine. Wait, you look a little um, Italian. (laughs) (laughs) Then everything is completely normal. Yes, everything's normal. Oh, okay. As it should be. (laughs) Actually, I should look a lot Italian. (laughs) So maybe I have to turn the Italian up. On, on my computer, Italian filter on the yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, yes. So our, our buddy Nate's band was uh, was playing a show in Jersey, and uh, I asked him to pick up um, a record by one of the bands that was playing, and I told him that um, you know I, I'm an idiot and I I I have a rule I don't pay more than fifteen dollars for records. So I said if it's over fifteen dollars, don't buy it for me. And it was a, a, the band's brand new record. And he came back and he said they were selling it, but it was 25 bucks. So I didn't buy it for you. So being the person, uh, someone who I just wanted to hear this band because I had heard good things about them. Uh, I went on their band camp page and I found that they put it out on cassette for eight bucks. So I went and bought the cassette. Um, they're a New Jersey band, but they're called the OC Rippers. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Yeah, wow. I think they're a Jersey band. They recorded in Tom's River, New Jersey, in May of no 2022. There. What's that? Nobody travels there to record. No, <laughs> you don't go from. You're not going to go from Orange County to 
Tom's River, New Jersey. <laughs> There's really nothing going on in Orange County. We're gonna have to travel all the way across the country and uh, and and go to scenic Tom's River, New Jersey, to record our album. Um, so I bought the cassette. Um, aptly titled band. There, lots of heavy uh, homage to Southern California early '80s punk. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, sixteen songs over the two sides. So nothing too long. Don't get too married to any song. Um, I perfectly produced for that wanting to sound like that time period. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth twenty five bucks on vinyl, but eight bucks for the cassette on Bandcamp. I'd say it's eight dollars well spent. Um, nice. I look forward to see, seeing them one day, if they play within four miles of my house, <laughs> at, a, <laughs> at a very appropriate time, so I could get home by like ten thirty, if that's right. possible. Um, it's not a school night. Those are the parameters with which I hope to see them. Um, <laughs> make it happen. Yeah. If you're OC, watching it in the comments, set it. Let's it's make it on, happen. Uh, <laughs> it's on. It's called Happy Hour. Air Travel Club on <laughs> defective tapes. So check them out. Good stuff. Cool. That's a new one. New one for me. Oh, you, you make a good point though. The price oh, of Diane it. Farris hey, on the OC stands go. for Ocean County. That there you go. Yep, yep, yep. There Part of go. New Jersey I don't really pay attention to. There you go. <laughs> Didn't we live Ocean there for County. like four months? They're not Orange County Rippers. We did live there for four months, Paul, yes. We did. Um, <laughs> therefore, I blocked it out of my... We worked at a nuclear power plant in Ocean County, New Jersey. What? In 1996. Um, and so, therefore, somehow, whatever nuclear radiation I got has erased the memory of the county from my mind. So, they OC stands for Ocean County, not Orange County. But I don't know. I think the four of us would agree that when we hear the term OC, we immediately think Orange County. So yeah, I don't think yeah, I'm, I'm going that far here. But you did good. Well done. That's great. That's a new yes, one. New Jersey is a state. It's a state. It's a state of euphoria. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. All right. Nice. So, oh, what you got? This was gifted to me recently by uh charles and i Ooh. thought it was going to be a joke i didn't expect to like it <laughs> peter panties <laughs> now hold on so here's the story um it's a rock opera wait wait hold together. on let me tell the story again, again. Paul, let me tell the story of gifting it to you i bought that record and i said if this record is no good there's no way Paul, Paul will not like. like <laughs> so I'm just gonna. Give it to him. I don't even think I listened to it. I just he came to my house and I said I have a record for you and this is, and he immediately fell in love. One hundred percent. So it's a rock opera. So Great. Neil yes. McNeil has been That's in it. the acting community of I think Vancouver, Canada. He's a, a man with Down syndrome and he wanted to expand on the Peter Pan play. So this entire rock opera album that was written and done by him and some friends, we're not even joking about this, is about Peter Pan getting an erection and wanting to make Wendy pregnant and have babies. And yes. lyrically, there's some lyrics on here that, um, I want to be a boy. I don't want to be a man. Fuck that. No mustache. Fuck that. No mustache. And it's, Brilliant. Like from top to bottom, I wanted to hate this, but and not even not hate it, but I didn't expect it to be as amazing as it is. Some of the songs are very heartfelt. Um, it it flows like lyrically, rhythmically. There's probably 20, 30 people who work on this with the uh. different voices, all the different characters, but just the whole like fight of Peter Pan wanting to remain a boy, but also wanting to make a baby with Wendy. There's this whole act of um uh, oh God, oh my mighty God, I pray to you, my fucking God. There's two women in front of me. One of them will be my not one of them will be my wife. 
I have a knife. I have a knife. It's just incredible. Artie's writing it down right now. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is him. This is him he's right ordering it. Uh, he's not he's writing it down. It. He's ordering it. That's uh, uh, Neil McNeil. And it's, uh, it's a really good, good record. Like, it's good. I've listened to it five times today. It's good. So please go buy it if you're into rock operas. I know people are like, um, what, Zone Arcade or like all that shit, but come on, like this is <laughs> this is like the real shit right here. Is Zen Arcade a rock opera? No, isn't it? <laughs> it's not. Oh, which one is? <laughs> um, I don't know. What hair is hair a rock opera? <laughs> wait, wasn't that a wait? Yeah, that's the double LP, wasn't it? Yeah, double LP yeah. equals rock opera, right? Oh, no, it was. It was. Oh. Open. Worldwide, yeah, it was about that kid who runs away from home and then his girl dies of the heroin overdose in the bed. Like, I'm right, I know I'm right. You're, you're right, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, this is right in line with that, and it's a single LP, so it's all hits, no fodder. Okay, you failed me on it. That's gonna be I a hard one. It. <laughs> it's a good record. Don't all run to so Discogs and don't all run to Discogs and buy this. There are plenty. Don't. Yep. Keep we'll watching the show. Left. Thank you so much. Concept album. There you go. Concept <laughs> record, not rock opera. I apologize. But anyway, <laughs> uh, um, did Wendy just bring you some ice too, or did you, Kim, bring you some ice just now? No, no, she's feeding the cats because the cats are going fucking bonkers because they haven't eaten. So I asked her. To, that was to them. Them. I thought that was Charles's dogs. No, no, they're hor they're they're horrible. They're like fucking half rat, half bird. I don't know my why. Dolls? I have cats. Did you say? Nope. Yes, what did you talk, think it was? Please feed my dolls. Uh, no, they're right here cat. for the entire time until I come back around. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and there he goes. <laughs> See, I told you he'd get banned from YouTube if he showed up. He's just canceled. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Kicked out. You got it up. Uh, rightly so, I would say. Facebook yeah, kicked out. They're all over it. All right, hang on. Oh, Artie, follow oh. Peter Panties, if you dare. Okay, yeah, the, the whole configuration changed, so I wasn't sure if Paul was up. It's back, it's back uh, now, right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, fuck, I don't know. Uh, all right. So, Chicago death metal. Can you name any Chicago death metal bands? Does anybody want to? Yes. But I, it's on the tip of my Billingsgate. <laughs> yeah, Billingsgate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the I fly in bands. the road burners. <laughs> yeah. Close, close. There's, there's not many Chicago death metal bands, or the there's many the bull there's evils? A chunk, but not a lot that have got you know compared to like New York or Tampa, like name recognized bands. So oh, we've got a, a, an entry here. A okay. Yeah. Of course, somebody in the peanut gallery is going to know like the one band, you know. Um, but uh, Broken Hope. Uh, classic 90s oh. death metal. This oh. comes with like an uh, this is a reissue that I just stumbled upon in a record store. Uh, this is a 90s gore metal classic. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Charles is typing, he's looking it up. Impulse Manslaughter came in on the private oh. chat. <laughs> there you go. Did you just go to the Wikipedia page while I was talking? No, I just <laughs> popped into my head, but I didn't want to interrupt you. I actually met the dude from Impulse Manslaughter too recently. He was uh, at one of our shows. Um, no, he wasn't at one of our shows. He was working at a record store in Milwaukee called, I can't remember, but he was, he was like, I don't know. Anyway, that's very exciting news for you. Uh, so this is uh, Broken Hope. This is Broken their, Hope. yeah, their mid career album, Omen of Disease. Cool. I typically do not like death metal like this. Like I tip, like the death metal I like is not gore driven. It's mm -hmm. like bulk thrower, you know, like like gore more like very apocalyptic versus mm -hmm. just like how horrifying of a, of a 
painting can I, you know, create? So um, a few exceptions, you know, I like some cannibal corpse. I like uh, exhumed, um, but like Broken Hope, this is this is pretty much straight up gore metal. The song titles include uh, Womb of Horrors. Um, you may not be familiar with the story of Womb of Horrors. It's apparently a, a woman who. A woman and a man who have sexual relations, and the woman is pregnant with uh, crab-like parasites, who then are born instantaneously after sex and consume the man that's having sex with them. It's told in a very poetic style on um, on this album. So, if you're, <laughs> if you're into fine literature, I recommend <laughs> a *Woman of Disease*. Uh, There's a song called *The Docking Dead*. I won't go into that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and this reissue has a bonus track, a live track called uh, He Was Raped, which is live in San Francisco. So that, you know, stop you it. Know stop it. Expect. Yes. <laughs> okay. You know what to, what to expect with uh, Broken Hope. But uh, it's a great band. The, this was their first uh, album with the new drummer. The original singer, like, died. I forget how. But uh, so they had a new singer, a new drummer. The drummer is in a band that we play with all the time called Black Cross Hotel. Uh, which is a goth, you know, kind of goth, dark wave, uh, post-metal man. So, but it's kind of funny because uh, when I met him, I was like, you're in Broken Hope. And it's like the only death metal band that I knew from Chicago at the time. So I stumbled upon, this is a new reissue from Horror Biz Records, which is like a Radiation Records subsidiary out of okay. Italy. It's some fancy green. Um, the original, you know, is like probably only came out on CD, I think, or maybe it was on LP for like a second. So How, what year up. did you say that came out? Originally, Originally it came out in uh, hold on, uh, 2013. What was the original record? I believe, yeah. Uh -huh. So pretty recent, but they uh, they just played Milwaukee Metal Fest and did really well. I actually don't know if that's if it came out earlier than that, and it was just, but yeah, uh, they're you know pretty much the. The main death metal band in Chicago that, that I think most people think of. Okay. Yeah. Could you read just for a second some of the poetic lyrics from the uh, man who's getting consumed by the crabs? That you really want to know the story of the womb of horrors? I just want to hear. I just want to hear the the romantic sort of couplets that. If you could do it in like an operatic voice, that would it's, be. It's not it's preferred. <laughs> you can't see them, right? This is tough. Wears me glasses. <laughs> Her considerable gut undulated and rippled, too horny to fucking care. I ignored this odd detail. I fucked her pregnant hole deeply from behind. Her distended belly grew bigger as I thrusted. I'll skip ahead. Um, <laughs> no, no, I was enraptured by that. <laughs> Don't do that. Protruding optical stalks that possess their father's eyes. First feast is a man, as I'm their daddy and their prey. Human faces, exoskeletons, eight legs, armored... Uh, chalet, I don't know if that must be a te technical term. Ravenous mouths and razor teeth cut me down to size. So it doesn't end well for the narrator in this in this story. No, no. But uh, yeah, some uh, rips though. It's really heavy. <laughs> it's, I'm looking it up now. They originally came out on Century Media, Artie. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, and they were like I, metal I almost Almost shed a tear there. I was entranced by that <laughs> poetry reading. <laughs> <laughs> Moving so, stuff, uh, indeed. Moving stuff. <laughs> I hope my kid didn't hear me read those lyrics because I've, I've committed a terrible crime. No, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> All right, God, I've got to follow that one now. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <Arthur. laughs> Let's have a little drink. Yes. Then I guess we can our... argue. I think that the good thing about this tonight, though, Mike, is that mm. I think we're lowering the bar. So the next one, <laughs> the next episode of this I is going to be amazing. Yeah, nothing can follow Peter Panties. <laughs> I don't know. He just did really well, man. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go deadly serious of my third round, my third pick, man. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I love, I love like, um, like contemporary kind of mid paced melodic punk with great like female vocalists i love it and there's a lot of them about there's a lot of them in the in the world france 
There's a lot of French ones. La Fraction, they've been going for a while. They're mm -hmm. kind of an older band. Rata Negra, the black rat from Spain. I love them. They're amazing. Accidente, Accidente, from, also from Spain. Great. I mean, we had this conversation a little bit maybe last week or the week before. Like, some of these bands are like actually better than like the bands from the 80s. Like, they're doing this stuff like way better, I think. And I got one from Sweden. I can love this record. I don't know if you guys know this record, but RT, if I say Man in Decline Records, yes. would that ring a bell for you? Of course. Yes. There you go. Uh, Dominic, who put out uh, Concrete Cross Record, among other many other records. That's it. Actually, this, the record I'm going to show got ousted by the Concrete Cross record last week because I just picked it up, right? And I was oh. like, geez, I, I kind of took this record out of the pile, but it's like on the on the same label as like the Concrete Cross thing. That's kind of crazy, right? But this one came out on like a bunch of different labels. And I was like, came out on like five or six different labels, like a Swedish label. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, let me cut to the chase. I'm talking about uh, this Swedish band called uh, Vanna, Vanna oh. Inget. Yeah, I love yeah, you know this band, Artie? Yeah. I love this band, like, because, Great. you know, it's mid-paced, melodic, punk, and you could just leave it there, And but there's, like, they're kind of different, you know, they don't have, like, the fuzzy guitars, and they but they don't have, like, those post-punk guitars either, right. which a lot of bands kind of tend to have. The guitar works, like, I don't want to use, like, pretentious words, but they're kind of, like, scratchy and, like, intricate. Like very interesting guitar work, and they've got this amazing singer uh, called called Carolina Engdahl, who mm -hmm. it's very like um it's very deceiving because you're kind of listening to this music and it's like you know it's an upbeat like you know melodic punk, but she's doing like these amazing like melodies and stuff and like with 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 the melody lines and the vocals, it really like adds to the music like so much, uh, absolutely amazing. And it's like not too dark and it's not too upbeat and poppy and happy. You won't, will not find this on like Epitaph or any of the pop punk labels, but it's pop. It's poppy punk. Yeah. But uh, it's so good. I've been playing this album to death this week. I love it. Do they, do they mix the songs or some like song or, like in English and Swedish? Or, like, how does it, or is it all? All the song titles are in Swedish, you know? Okay. Um, it's just great. You know, it's, uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a lot of bands doing this kind of stuff, you know, the mid paced melodic punk. And this, for me, this band kind of stands out in that field. Great band. I love that stuff. I'm a sucker for it. Oh, I think you'll like it. This is a really good one in that, in that style. Absolutely. I can vouch for that. That was like a period in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, where it felt like all of Scandinavia was suddenly discovering the wipers and like Pacific Northwest stuff, you know? Uh, and, it, and, and but it, but it was all good. Everything came, like Gorilla Angreb and uh, all that stuff. I was going to ask you if you like Girl Around Grooks. I remember you, you brought them up before, but this is kind of a little bit different to that, actually. But it's kind of in the same ballpark, you could say. Yeah, came out it's around like, the same time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's such a great, memorable. They've got like a bunch of other records, too. This is their first album. came out like in uh, 2011. So it's like, Jesus, or like 12 years old. But uh, Oh, God, yeah. is, that, is that recent? I thought it was older. I thought it was like, okay. It could be older. Like maybe this pressing came out in 2011. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, Vanna Inget, Alva. And I found that it's like this very interesting nugget. It's interesting to me. They, there's a member credited on this. Um, her name is uh, Christine Alman. And I kind of looked her up. She's a, a cellist, but I, she might, I don't think she's on this record, but she's in this band at, uh, you know, at times. <laughs> and she's like played with like Mark Lanigan. And I'm thinking she was the cello player with Mark Lanigan. I mm. think it's her. And she played with like, she toured with Robert Plant as a, maybe I'm assuming as his cello player and stuff. But she's kind of in this band. You know, so that was pretty cool, I thought. That is wild. It's wild, right? Yeah. yeah. Great record. <clears throat> Love it. Vanna yeah. Inget from Sweden. Alvar. Sure That's my third pick. <laughs> my screen went black. Oh, oh no. yeah? Are you okay? Right now? Okay. No, All right. we're good. Back there we in. go. Okay, cool. All right. Charles, what's your next pick? Third pick. Um, so continuing on from the last pick, that same show that I sent my friend Nate Ooh. to buy records from, another band from New Jersey played, and their record was fifteen dollars. So he bought it for me. Um, Great story of they. Uh, <laughs> so 
Paul and I, what'd you say? It's a great story <laughs> about <laughs> budget. Yeah, this is great. Oh. Tales, tales from the tight pod. <laughs> exactly. You're like the guy in the in the in the 2000 is like the show has to be five dollars because you don't believe inflation has happened over the last like five decades. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Your point being, acknowledging, appreciate your dedication. Um, still working. Yeah. I. And yet I still own more records than you <laughs> somehow. <laughs> um, so this band, so this band, uh, the, the first uh, time I heard them was because uh, an old friend uh, and uh, Matt Weeks from Michigan um, had advertised that he was putting a record out by them and that they were from New Jersey. Matt was the singer of a, a uh, 90s band called Current and huh. ne Neymar. Uh, oh, which the, is Amen backwards. Amen spelled backwards. Yeah. Um, so, I know you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so he banned from New Jersey. And then I actually realized that one of the guys in the band um, I've, I've known for a really long time, he used to do shows in a house in Tom's River, New Jersey called the 508 House. Mike uh, Shepard and uh, they're called Kirkby Kiss. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, I've got that. It's coming right here. It's a fucking good record. Yeah, it's a really good record. Very, uh, you know, if I don't think the '90s were the the uh, the terrible decade most people want to give them as far as music goes. This is very rooted in what. What I would be considered '90s, '90s music from all over. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't listen to this and say, "Oh, it's from New Jersey for sure." Uh, there's different songs sound like different parts of the country from that decade, um, and uh, everything about it—the production, the the singing. Uh, the, the, there's, you know. A song with spoken word over it. it. It's just a lot of it is is a lot of a lot of callbacks, but very well done and more and not like uh, not in an eye rolling way. Plus, I don't know if you can tell, it's probably the thickest vinyl I've ever seen in my life. It's like a pancake, but it's not <laughs> like three hundred. It's like three hundred gram vinyl. It's almost like a seventy eight. Three hundred really grams. Wait, 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 no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hey, Charles. But, but um, it's like a really thick piece that's of That's huge. Hey, Charles, yeah. real quick. Uh, can I feel the weight of that? Will you hand that down to me? Oh, here you go. <laughs> Hold on, here you go. Oh, oh yes. Huh. <laughs> that is pretty heavy, right? It's a really heavy record. Here, wait, here you go. Give it back. Did Give it back. Did you guys rehearse that? Give it back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, Very cool. So yeah, Great it's content. on Council Great. Records. Very cool. Council's putting out a lot, and it's interesting because Council's putting out a lot of like uh, reissuing a lot of Michigan music. Um, they just released a, a record by a, a Michigan band called Vine. They did uh, Ordination of Aaron. Um, Matt was in Current. Current was reissued by, I believe, Numero Group um, recently. What? Um, yeah, they, yeah, there's a three LP set, but he did. He's got some of his own. That yeah, like, like Car Council show. Records did their own, but he yeah. but Numero Group did a. I think it's a triple LP of current yeah. uh, current stuff. Yeah, and look, three, look, current three current records at the same time. Um, <laughs> they were a band that my my band played. We toured with them. My old band, great people, great band. Um, nice guys. So it was kind of a surprise that he put out a record by a band from New Jersey. Good job, Matt. Thank you for representing. Cool. Artie, I think Matt lives in um, he does. He lives in Chicago now. Oh. You guys hang out. We, we're they about also have a seven inch out too. Nice. By the way. That came okay. also on council about... records. It's such a weird name. It's That's such a weird what? Kirk B. Kiss. It's like uncomfortable to say. Kirk B. Kiss. It is. But are you familiar with what it means, Mike? I think no. it's a sock it's like a I, Star Trek? I, if I, I looked it up, it's like a headbutt from 
a soccer uh, team of some sort. Okay, so it's like a, a, a what was it called? a Glasgow Smile or one of those things, right? It's like a, right, it's like a when you head, it's like a soccer term, I believe, where you headbutt gotcha. somebody. Makes sense now. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sports. So. Yeah. It is. A, it is a, a different. It, a not. It's a tongue twister, like Red L'Oreal. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. But, That's funny. You're talking about council records. Just literally yesterday, Jordan, because Jordan's from Chicago, he was saying that is it Matt who does council records? Yeah. Yes. Right? Saying that he wants to like come on the show. So. Oh, nice. Matt should totally be on the show. Yeah. There you go. What a coincidence. He's like a some Chino Horde records, or at least a Chino Horde current split, or something like that. Mm. I traded him some Jihad records that I put out for his um current chino horde split oh. i definitely he i definitely won on that because <laughs> i mean it's <laughs> job right <laughs> speaking of which <laughs> the music buddies the music buddies oh, okay nice. so here this is this is a very speaking of like michigan stuff this is so it's basically about the city of kalamazoo and there's songs on here specifically about people from Kalamazoo from the 90s. Uh, Joel Wick, Derek Kenny, Craig Lacombe, Brian Charles, Steve Versaw. Um, this was a cassette that the band The Music Buddies, we are the Music Buddies, B-U-D-D-I-E-S. The cassette itself had gone through a wash the few, a few times, um, had uh, come out somehow they from 1995-96, uh, gave it to somebody to clean it up as much as they could, and then to fucking muddy it up again, they decided to make 25 of them lathe cuts, which, by the way, there's still some left in case <laughs> anybody wants one. You can still get these. However, it just came out on a Chunklet Records. Um, chunklet? So some of the lyrics, you can, there's lots of lyrics. I just want to talk about, like, the Craig Lacombe song just for a little bit, because I'm torn between, yeah. like, I don't know if the song is just about Craig's penis, or if it's about Craig, but that's equal parts both with the first lyrics being, <clears throat> uh, you were never circumcised at birth. Uh, the baby bird never loses a turn because he used to like pull his dick out all the time and pull his foreskin up over it and pretend he was a baby bird thing. And it was the most ridiculous thing you'd ever seen. The whole song is about just dick tricks that Craig would do. Um, Songs about Steve Versar are him, uh, mostly Craig's penis. Okay, so see, he must have the record. Uh, and um, the song about Derek Kenny takes uh, elements of jihad and makes it about him and in good spirited Derek because he also owned the Comic Cafe. I think one of the only places that the Music Buddies played. Um, I don't want to go into the Joel Wick song because it gets a little dicey, but it's a wonderful song about eating burritos and him paying for the entire scene to eat. Because he would get drunk and just buy everybody burritos to take him get burritos. Um, and the Steve Saw song about him uh, breaking amps and not comping to it. Brian Charles living in his past high school days. You can still get this from Trunklet. Like I said, I think there's only 25, but I think there's like eight left. Um, Paul, let, Paul, let me see that. Can you pass that up? Pass that up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys. You. Pretty good. Looks pretty cool. Here, take it back. <laughs> take it back. Well done. Thank you. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> it's worth it if you just want, like, A, the songs are good. They're catchy as hell. Even though it's lathe cut and went through the washing machine a few times. I have a mosquito yeah. that keeps going up. Um, There's six copies left, apparently. There you go. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, um, so it's a good piece of history, especially anybody from – the nineties or whatever. Uh, Artie, you met those guys when you were on tour with garden variety and slept in your van outside my house. Uh, they were all there at that show. Um, and of course, that's a good show. Shows, I remember show. Show. Yeah. I always picked the van because, I, uh, uh, I, I was straight edge and I just wanted to go to sleep. Those were the days. Yeah. Um, how'd that work out for you? you doing great. <laughs> good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a let me get this straight there's a, a Kalamazoo a group of people in Kalamazoo Michigan one of the major metropolises of this country and they somebody wrote songs and put out a, a actual physical document of these songs specifically about the people in this 
in this group of people. Yep. And uh, and there's only six left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so do the math. Not, do the math. Yeah. I have one. Paul has one. The band members have them. Hopefully, everyone who has a song written about them has one. And now there's six left. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Just establishing the fact. That's yeah. interesting. Check it out. The songs are catchy, especially the theme song. Because at the end, they would end with the same theme song of We Were the Music Buddies. And then oh. B U D D I E S. They wrote a yeah. posthumous song right. about themselves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had a van at the time, and apparently a song never recorded was also about me. Uh, but that one wasn't recorded, only these. And there's two I, Joel Wick version songs on here. Can, can I add that Denied. Chunklet beautifully packaged this in a very nice mailer. And um, I didn't order this. They sent it to me, um, to my, to Charles Sausage Fingers Maggio. <laughs> Um, which was my nickname in high school. So I, I don't know how they knew that that was my nickname in high school. I have a feeling Paul might have said something to him. I, I am giving you a look at why it was the, my nickname in high school. Um, someone asked me the other day why I played bass in a band, and I said because I tried to play guitar, and the guitar teacher was like, no, 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 not with those fingers. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was... Thank you very much for the uh, for the freebie. I was gonna do my that my copy of it, but uh, Paul would have beat me to it, so I'll, I'll pick something else. Oh, you can easily talk about just Joel Wick stories for you. How about the you fact that ten percent of the pressing is represented on this show right now? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, I feel there's more to be talked about this record, sir. <laughs> we um, we barely touched the surface. <laughs> barely peeled the onion. Exactly. All right, RT. On oh, you go. Crap. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Weird, weird town. Um, so uh, my wife and I watch a lot of TV, and uh, we are really into Yellow Jackets. Have you seen this show? You ask. Charles is nodding grimly like he doesn't he does not care for the show. Okay. I mean I've seen almost, it, but I'm not like a huge fan. He's almost seen it. I've, yeah. Uh so I've seen the, some clips on Instagram. I feel like I've seen the whole thing. Sure. It's your it's it's Charles rightfully is unimpressed. It's your typical story about teenage girls becoming cannibals in an air crash, uh stranded in, 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 oh, that, in an Oh, that old gig? Yeah, that old trope. So um uh, what do you call it? So the last episode of the most recent season happened and typically my wife doesn't recommend records or music to me, but we watched the last episode and uh, there's a scene there's a climactic scene. I won't spoil it for anyone who watches the show, but there's a scene where the song is played and it's a really captivating song, a really strange uh, like eerie song. And we thought, Oh, it's maybe it was written for the show or it's some kind of effect. It's got synthesizers and weird vocalizations. And then we watch the credits and it comes up and it's, uh, it's this woman, Buffy St. St. Marie. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Are you familiar? No. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it turns out it, they, they just used her song and her song is taken from that's the, it's the first song on the record called, uh, God is alive, magic is afoot, and it's 68 or 69, I forget, uh, and it's her adaptation, lyric, musical adaptation of a Leonard Cohen uh, book, uh, which he wrote prior to him giving up on writing and becoming a, a singer, uh, which is, you know, obviously that didn't go too well because he died, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you were a writer, he'd still be with us today. Exactly. So glad we agree. Uh, so this is the first song is uh, so it's it's basically her reciting a passage from the book, but with weird multiple layers of vocalizing, some guitar, some weird synth, and uh, it's like a really spooky song for the scene that happens, and it's it, it's really appropriate because the song is basically about like nature overtaking man's construction and you know um et, et cetera like like the inevitability of uh of magic overtaking all of uh, what man has created so 
Um, so my wife was like, you have to buy this record. Like she, she's asked me to buy her a record like every other year. So I was like, okay. And she made it very clear that, uh, it was important that we own this. She started listening to it on Spotify every day, the whole record. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's dropped something. Uh, only at the record. <laughs> <Okay. party>. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's uh, it's it's like I guess it falls in the freak folk genre, which I'm not. If you told me, oh, get, t- check out this freak folk genre, I'd folk? say no. I'm going, I'm walking away now. But this is uh, this fits within that, and it's uh, she's a Native American or Native Canadian First Nations person who uh, it's like a, her. I went down a real rabbit hole learning about us because I had to find the record on Discogs and order it from somebody and get one that wasn't in like falling apart because it's like you know three thousand years old um so i lucked into a copy for not too much money and um and since then now i think everybody else has the same idea as me because it's seems to be popping up and selling really quick because of that show Um, right yeah because of the show because everyone this song was so like took everyone by surprise and it's a record that wasn't appreciated when it came out but uh, has gone on to become like like an important record in uh, in like the psychedelic slash whatever the freak folk scene. Um, but yeah, she was native that got scooped up or in what they called the uh, and this I've learned about. Whoa! Almost dropped the record. That'd be yeah, no, great. Bring it now, uh, this is gonna be terrible. What'd you say? I, I just can tell that this story is going to like bring us down, right? It's, it's going to bring you down. Don't worry. Yeah, I yeah. have I have a, a sad story too. After Rocky, so <laughs> don't worry. Why couldn't this it have just been those like girls like make the bones into a jug band and they like go out on a high note? Like, st- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, I'm sure she had some good times, uh, but she was adopted or not adopted. She was basically stolen from her family. There was something called the Sixty Scoop in Canada which lasted until the eighties where native children would just get like taken away from their families and brought to uh, live with white families and grow up with white families. So she grew up and had like a classical education with a white family, but was taken from her family at three years old or something horrifying. And then that basically informed a lot of her art and music. So there's, there's uh it's, it's typical hippie stuff. You know, there's a lot of like sexy free love stuff on here, but there's also like, you know, uh, all mothers lie to their children. Um, you know, like like a lot of uh, a lot of stuff about like children being corrupted and children mm-hmm. being you know mistreated. So it's uh, it's wild and it's it's very witchy. There's a few rockin' songs on it that are like, yeah. oh, I can see this being on the radio back then. This the only single was this one called "Better to Find Out for Yourself," which is like two minutes long, and it's basically like how shitty men are, and you can't tell anybody; they just have to find out for themselves. Um, so it's 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 not a fun record, but it's uh it's really intense. And uh, my wife and I listened to it last night while we were just like um, stoned on the couch, and uh, we were just like like whoa, this is like a wild record. Like we're really really into it. So it adds another layer if you um, take a lot of drugs while you're listening to it, uh, which is probably by design. But uh, it's it's really intense. Buffy Saint Marie, and the album is called. Uh, Illuminations. Nice. I yeah. yeah, I've been trying to find like her records for ages over here, but it's, they're kind of hard to find. But that's a great pick. That's a great. I didn't know it was like in a TV show. Yeah, I had never heard of her before that show. So you know, you you discover things in the weirdest places. Yeah, I, I suppose it's like how all these young kids discovered like Kate Bush, like decades right. later from uh, what's it, Stranger Things, right? Stranger Things. Yeah, I mean Kate exactly. Bush was a huge artist anyway, but the fact that these like new generation of kids are kind of finding out about Kate Bush because yeah. of the TV show. That's pretty cool. There's no wrong way to find out about no. music. No, or, no, no, you know, no, no. So, um, that's no that's awesome. Time. I would argue this show might be the wrong way. Fair. <laughs> I mean, let's. I don't think anybody should find out about Peter Panty. It's literally the worst way. Anybody should find out about Peter Panty. There he goes. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, this always know. happens when Charles comes on. He, I think he's got like a, a little bit of a dodgy. Hang on, let's put us it's back in order. order. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about his, uh, no, a suspect yeah. topic is when he gets kicked off. That was so my mic drop. I, my, something funny, and I dropped the mic as <laughs> he <to> left. <laughs> works, it works. All right, 
let's continue the sadness, the misery, and the despair. One of my favorite uh, musicians of all time passed away this week. Can you guess who it is? David Bowie. Good guy. <laughs> what was, that was the guy from the Groundhogs. I'm a little behind on the news. Charles got it. I don't know his name. I can't remember his name. Mike. That guy. Go. That this guy. guy. And, yeah. Tony McPhee from the Groundhogs. Jesus Christ. Fucking, they're one of my favorite bands. You know, but... I've never heard them. I got to admit. Oh, uh, I'll recommend you a couple of. If anyone has never heard the Groundhogs, check out "Thank Christ for the Bomb" and "Split." They're the two best records. I'm showing this one. Cherry, you must yeah. have a song "Cherry Red," right? I know the song "Thank Christ for the Bomb" because yeah, that was like covered by somebody fairly recently. And oh, really? The Groundhogs song was referenced. Okay. And yeah. also another. Just to go on a sidetrack, like my, another one of my favorite bands is the Apostles, and Andy Martin from the Apostles was like obsessed with the Groundhogs. So they kind of lifted like song titles from the Groundhogs, and like they kind of covered the Groundhogs. But anyway, like Tony McPhee like passed away this week. I picked this record because it's like it's it's the best picture of him. You know, you can see his face. <laughs> but I'm not going to talk about the Groundhogs. I'm kind of using this as a segue into a, a newer band who had a great story about Tony McPhee, and it was like a more contemporary band just to show you like the lineage of like, you know, what an influence he had. So this band, oh my God, this is, look at this. The name of the band is amazing. The art, the artwork is amazing. It's going to blow you away. Are you ready? Is it sad? No, uh, no. From here on out, it gets real upbeat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's bring on yeah. the Admiral, the Admiral himself from the UK. The Admiral, Sir Cloudly, Shovel. There he what? is. <laughs> <laughs> I am not familiar. Oh, man, this is it. our first record called uh, Don't Hear It, Fear It. This oh. is their first record for about 10, 15 years ago, I guess. Yeah, 2012, there you go, 11 years ago. Rise Above Records Band. They're on Rise Above Records. Oh, okay. But people think, ah, do metal, stoner yeah. rock. No. This band is like, I know, they like take me back to like before punk had been invented. Like whoever invented it, we can argue about. But like, um, like 1975, like 1976, England, guys with long hair kind of playing punky stuff like the Pink Fairies. Okay. And like the earlier Motorhead before, you know, before Overkill and before Bomber when they had like more like a, a different sound, right? This band kind of completely like encapsulates like that mid 70s like kind of music, which isn't doom. It's not like Black Sabbath or, you know, any of that stuff. It's a different kind of heavy, right? So like Groundhogs, Pink Fairies, The Deviants is another good band from that era, like pre punk, but punky. Yeah. Like psychedelic hard rock. There's so many good bands from the era, and this band is kind of doing that, that kind of a sound, but like, you know, these days. And I'm showing this because they uh they had him they had Tony McPhee play on one of their records. Oh and they I love were like, the cover that that record you showed, I love the cover. And like the, I probably would have bought it just because of the ref, ref I bought them all out just because I love this is the second album, which is like just as good. It's called Don't Dickens. Hear It, Fear It. Don't, yes, don't, don't hear it, fear it. This one's called Check Em Before You Wreck Em. This is the second album. Oh, I feel like a theme. What's the third one? <laughs> oh, can you guess? The theme is like, don't this guy's always on the Keep it greasy. Bros, bros before hoes? Keep oh, it wait, greasy. No, it? <laughs> Keep it <laughs> greasy. All right. You know, and then they kind of matured on their, on their fourth record. I know. Like, they're getting serious now. Yeah. It's like very, so, uh, very Here's un- a question in the chat. Is it like Hawk Wendy? Uh, or... Not really. It's not a spacey. It's more like down to earth. There's a little bit of that Hawk Wind in there, a little bit. But uh, it's more like, yeah, like the Groundhogs, the Pink Fairies. But the, this this Cardinal-esque bird has a uh, theme through all of them, throughout all of them. Whoa. What's up, Paul? Oh, this, this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was tripping out for a second. I guess he's the Admiral, right? <laughs> the Admiral. <laughs> That's the Admiral? But this is what the band looks like. you know. Wait, the Admiral is the bird? 
Yeah, none of I, them are birds. None of it. Well, yeah, no, they're all they're humans. Off. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So they they posted a story about like how they got because the, they loved the groundhog, so they managed to get Tony McPhee after he had like had like two or three strokes. He couldn't speak, but he went to the studio and played guitar on like the record. And they had they posted a picture with him like in the English countryside, like it just looks out something out like out of the seventies, you know. It's in the English countryside, like mist rolling over the hills, and they're like, "Man, you know, it's the saddest day of our career." Like Tony McPhee's passed away. He came to our studio. He recorded a you know the, the solo, and they were like, apparently, like the the producer said to him, uh, "Tony, you know, do you think you could do like a better take of that solo for us?" And Tony's like, "Yeah, I've got a better take of it. All right." up my ass. <laughs> and this is a guy that could barely speak and had like three strokes, you know, so he was like, he was, uh, he was very uh, spirited and, uh, until the end, you know, so, but, so, Tony McPhee, the Admiral, check out the Admiral if you kind of want, you know, some of that 70s, greasy, pre-punk, like heavy music. I'm very I do want to that. that. That's, I love the cover, I love all their little sloganism and like i love the catchy phrases like it's, i mean people might be put off i mean because you know if you don't like stone or rock and you don't like do metal you might not check them out because they're on rise above but they've got yeah. a totally different thing to that totally. i don't like either of those things but i like your vibe and i like the way you're pushing it and i'll check it out yeah, and i like the red-headed birds like give me a red-headed bird i'm in 100 i'm like paul's paul's sale of peter panties you have done a good job of selling this this thank this you album. Yes. Thank you. Well, <laughs> do, I, do I get employed by Lee Dorian now at Rise Above Sales Division? <laughs> get, hey, guess what, Artie, back. I did good, and it's a good record. But if you heard it, if you actually heard it, you'd be like, all right, this is awesome. It's it's the marketing of it. You, I, I'm, I'm still not, I haven't converted. Yeah. For me, right. it wasn't Mark. It was just the name Peter Panties. I thought that was a brilliant, <laughs> yeah. a brilliant name. It is. Was going out of the grave. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Even Diane. there's there's two girls. When I'm gonna marry, I have a knife. Like that didn't sell you. I thought that that would be like the thing that was like, Artie would be like, oh, let's see where this goes. If it rhymes, it does rhyme. <laughs> wife and knife. The rest of the lyrics. <laughs> you said marry, not wife. All right. Oh. We'll, we'll, we'll take this off. It's on. implied. The rhyme is implied. Yes, it's an implied rhyme. Right. Let's, uh, let's, uh, um, yeah, we'll take this offline. Where are we? Fourth round. I was first, right? So that, mean, that means Charles is next, right? Yes, there we go. It's going to be a three hour show. <laughs> so I'm so I was trying to stay you, professional I, here. As Paul, Paul took my fourth pick with the music buddy. So I, I quickly All right. shifted gears. Um, All right. So last time I was on the show, a couple of months ago, I was on the show with um, Sean from uh, EHC and Black Claw Records. And yep. I'd been ordering some records from him. And he cool. had gotten in a pressing. I I have this record, the original, but I kind of wanted to reissue because I love it so much. Um, RKL, it's a beautiful feeling. Oh, it got yes. reissued. There we go. There we go. That's got a reissued by right It's there. Alive mm -hmm. Records. Um, I, I don't know. If you like any, this is the definition of California hardcore for me. Like, just incredible. Um, yeah. The, I mean, this guy right here. Where is he? Yes, that, the, the mascot that, that little character right there. Um, you know, instantly recognizable. Um, it's numbered out of five hundred. It's on purple vinyl. It comes with this amazing flyer, picture book. Really incredibly packaged. Um, it's got a. I don't know. Would you call that an Obi strip? Let's, let's call it an Obi. Yeah. Obi yeah. strip. Um, what does that stand for? I, I just think it's. Uh, it was. I'm not a. I'm not someone who likes to own multiple copies of records, but this one. This one I make the exception for, and it was under fifteen dollars. Believe it or not. Yes, I need to know how much. And it was. they, you know, just to kind of get get on the. Uh, get on the sales tip just yesterday sean posted he found 15 more copies of this so if you're oh if you're looking for one he's got them blacks i didn't it want it but now essential california yeah. hardcore from 
I, I want to say the original too, so I thought I'd be able to it, but it looks great. Eighty three. Oh, he's gone again. Get the get the reissue. It's great just for then the booklet that comes with it. Seriously, one of the best from punk snard players. I was gonna yeah. touch. He, wasn't he like like fifteen, sixteen years old or something? Like his bass like playing on those songs is fucking incredible. The LP two, if you hear, if you like, listen past it and like all of the punk <laughs> yeah. stuff and just hear what that fucking dude is doing. What's his name? Yeah, they Stan, were yeah. Stan McJohnson or whatever. Like it's, I just mm -hmm. made that name up. I don't know what his name is, <laughs> but he's a <laughs> fucking amazing <laughs> bass player. Hang on, we're talking about the second album with, with, with the like the lifestyles of the rich kids on LSD. That one, uh, the one with the blue cover. Oh, the like, keep, uh, keep laughing, right? Keep yeah, laughing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what one that is. Is that the that's the first album, right? It's keep keep yeah. laughing is the first album, then the second, but even album that seven like... inch, even like that, that seven inch is just fucking great. Like, you listen past it, um. I'm gonna have to order one of those. I, I have the original, but I, that just looks too good to pass up, and I don't, and I never want to play the original because it's just like you know. Old. You don't think about it because so much of that stuff that came out on Mystics and that Southern California era right. is great. But someone wrote like Nardcore. It kind of, if you listen to it consecutively, it all sounds like the same, like mm -hmm. repute and like right. the RKL and the, the don't know and like all of those things, like all the mystic flow together and you can't differentiate which is which, but right. when you listen to them separately, comparatively to different parts of the country doing stuff, you can noticeably tell the, the stuff. There you go. Starlight 13 is getting some love. That's yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. RKL is like next level though, man. Like just, just the musicianship yeah. and like just the stop on oh, it's yeah crazy. Doctor No, Doctor No is another one. Yeah, Ice Good Satan. Yeah, Doctor No is a great one. Mm -hmm. Sure. So we're waiting for are we waiting for Charles? He's not come just, back uh, yet. So let's maybe let's let's carry on. Uh, hang on. So it's, oh, it's your. So turn. I was I was where I would have been next. Right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So my theme. Which would fit into Charles's theme is uh, um, maybe above fifteen dollars, but still completely affordable. <laughs> um, oh. oh, okay. Shall we bring him back on? Let's bring him back on. Wait, is he trying to get in? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey! hey you got it disconnected. Sure. Yo, you're disconnected. I don't know why. I hey. <laughs> no one's ever said that. Yo, you're disconnected. <laughs> Yo, hey, fuck face. What happened to your phone line? Anyway, hey, so this is my next pick. Bloody Mannequin Orchestra. Do you guys know this record? No. It's Washington, D.C., 1983. Like, all of Peers with Minor Threat, Peers with all of those bands that everybody loves. A little bit more avant-garde they had that same almost so they had some horns in there which i guess throughout the show i've come to like agree that like i'm fine with horns now <laughs> and doses um no accordion so i don't know how that's going to affect some people who started at the beginning of this so i don't know if this is egg core or omelet core <laughs> i don't know whatever Chain maybe it's a um <laughs> And our Benedict core because it like <laughs> combines a couple things. However, uh, but uh, the, the vocals have that same sort of cadence and delivery that the that the Dead Milkmen have, where you think that right. it's a California band, but you're like, no, that's an East Coast band. Um, they've got great songs about just like getting a meal at McDonald's and other more contemporary songs about questioning your place as like a kid and and or man in your place in society growing up like am i a soldier do i make my own choices in this stuff but the vocals are great it's it's clear except when the horns are playing and then you kind of like i don't know that's when i take a pill for a migraine coming on but then in between all of that it has it's it has like punch and great timing great songs songs that'll be in your head for weeks 
1983, Washington, D.C., and uh, um, 100% affordable. Like, I think there's copies on Discogs right now for, like, 20 bucks. Hmm. Wow. Comes with the lyric sheet. As you can see them on the back, there's, um, they broke, like, one of their dads probably had an office and they got on the roof, or maybe that's a McCrory's or a Kmart or something. And uh, you can see somebody's playing a horn. There's a horn and a snare drum, so you know that they're committed to... Yes, half of like an art form or like, right. um, yeah. Actually, the name is ringing a bell. I've seen it somewhere, but I've never heard that record though. Bloody man! So there's that whole era of that whole stuff that was going on with like gets overshrouded by the the Discord stuff that was just pretty much like hardcore and whatnot coming out. But there was this other stuff going out like nine three five three. Was that the name of the band? There was all sort of like gothy and TikTok. Oh, oh pre dag nasty says Diane Ferris. So, uh, oh wow, there you uh, go. Yeah, it was recorded eighty three, eighty four at Inner Ear, and Don did it. So it has to. I don't know. Damn. There you go. I don't know. He probably recorded. He recorded a lot of garbage too. Like, <laughs> I mean, because he's just getting paid to press a button. It's so. Colin Sears, I think, right? Colin Sears from Dag Nasty. Wow. He did the yeah yeah he did the front cover art by great record uh go go buy it now while they're still affordable yes I think it is. Okay. yeah yeah tick tock tick tock I am a clock <laughs> Diane knows what I'm talking about <laughs> that was nine three five three uh my impression of them I don't know if that's an actual song or just my impression of them I'm gonna start doing uh, impressions of DC bands after this so uh stick around for the after party next up beefy <laughs> <laughs> that's an attractive looking record i would buy that sight scene just you know looking at that it's great i think everybody should i mean yeah. it's affordable it's a part of the dc scene that um is still connected to all of that stuff this is like you, you think of those separations of shows but like the shows like kalamazoo for example um there weren't like hardcore shows it would be a mixed bag you'd have like a rap guy and like a band with a, a cello and a hardcore band and like whatever like so it was like a mixed bag of stuff so this comes in the era when it was like everybody playing with everybody like i've got this just... compilation album called dc rocks which has got like all these crazy bands on it but a lot of funky bands on it like eight chars on there and like they're all from dc it's called like, dc yeah. rocks it's, that's an interesting record too yeah no. Aren't they on that comp? Are they on that comp? Uh, mixed nuts don't crack or something. Yes, yes, they are. With like Black Market Baby and yeah, Mission Impossible. I think is on there. Dave Grohl's band. Dean Bramage. Hey, you should try to have Dave Grohl on here. I'm actually I, surprised uh, Dave Grohl hasn't been on here yet. He's, I think he's, I think he was at Dave my mom's does, like on at her church. He's, he's a little bit busy. He's Paul, I'm not sure on. if you know this, but Dave Grohl doesn't appear on a lot of things. Yeah. He's very selective. I, I, I rarely, I rarely <laughs> see him anywhere. You rarely ever see him he's, on anything. Yeah, he said it only come on if uh, Henry, his mate Henry, comes on. So if we can get those. I think he was at like a, a friend of mine's communion just to make an appearance to say yeah. like, "Hey, yeah, yeah." He's. I'm. What, the, I'm surprised he wasn't on the Bill Florio wedding video in some capacity. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, dude, what's up? <laughs> well, you know what? This is nothing yeah. against Dave Grohl. It's a little bit of like, come on, man. You're going on that? Like, you can at least come on my thing. <laughs> my mom's birthday's next week. Can you come out for that? Like, you did this other thing. <laughs> All right. Artie. Anyway, Bloody Mannequin or Orchestra. Uh, Great pick. You can get it for about 20 bucks. Great pick. Or less. The diagnostic thing excites me because I actually, I like diagnostic. All eras. There you go. I, I First of all, I, I, yeah. I want to call out two things. The Bill, <laughs> the Bill Floria wedding video reference is limited audience edition. Commentary. That's that's the. Uh, I'll I'll start dropping quotes from it if you want to go deep. <laughs> that is that is Mike. Are you familiar with the the Bill Floria wedding video? I know Bill Florio. Mm -hmm. I do not know his wedding video. It's the not party. a video of his wedding. I'll tell you that. Okay. Uh, I recommend you. He used to work yourself. for he used to work for a wedding video company, and he made a compilation of bloopers, okay, okay. the the edits that he had to make. So it is the deep cut. You're right. Yeah, it's like a B side it's good. It's deep a good cut. cut. 
It that has not been reissued on DVD or streaming format yet. So, it, well, it's, it's coming out on a yeah. three sided LP. <laughs> that I would buy. Yeah. I would. It's a laser um, disc. A laser disc. <laughs> I want this is too much inside baseball. All right, RT. Yeah, compose, yourself, compose yourself. Compose the yourself. Second theme, theme of this episode seems to be affordability. Oh. Uh, we have Charles's very price restrictions. Every record Paul has brought up has has been. It's affordable. You can. It's affordable. accessible to you. You know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very. It's very egalitarian um, episode. Of what are you listening to? So uh, <laughs> until. So until, until, yeah. No, no, no. It's not much of a segue. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I don't know. I have, I have two more. I, have, I picked a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You have a record I want to ask you about later too. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, we played. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a typical criteria. Uh, we uh, we played with uh, with Dark Angel, as you know, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we opened for them, and we thought we're going to get fucked because we're the first band on a four band bill, and we need a sound guy. This is like a big show for us, so we hired a local sound guy. So I wrote to uh, my ex roommate and friend Artie, who runs uh, the St. Vitus Bar in New York, and, and asked him if we could borrow his sound guy, and he he was like, sure, and he sent me this guy Bob. And so I traded some text with this guy Bob. He became our sound guy for the show, and I learned that he was in the he was in the band. He was in the band Skull Shitter. Um, Skull Shitter. There was a period in my life where I would have been like Skull Shitter. I gotta buy that record. Then there was a later period in, in my life where I, Skull Shitter. That sounds stupid. I would never buy that record. Now I'm in the period of my life where I'm back to the beginning where I'm like, I have to, I of course I have to buy a record by a band called Skull Shitter. So I asked Bob to bring the record with him. I was like, I, I want to hear what this is. And they're on Bandcamp and stuff, And I, but I, I just didn't have time to I'm like, bring me a Skull Shitter record because I knew they had one. So it brought it to me and I've been listening to it on Spotify and, uh, and at home pretty much nonstop. We've only been home four days. It's, uh, I mean, I don't know what you would expect a band called Skull Shitter to sound like. Wait, can we go around and just guess real quick? If you want. The, band, the, the album's called Goat Claw. Let's rule so, out. Hall and Oats? <laughs> Mustard plug? Agathocles meets Red Hot Chili Peppers? <laughs> no. They're all incorrect. It's Goldfinger? Basically, it's basically death metal with some grindcore mixed in. All right. So it's a... Uh, <laughs> any Transylvanian? Any Transylvanian influence? <laughs> no Transylvanian or San Diegan influence. It's, but it's, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, and normally I would see a band like this and just flip past it, but I, I've been listening to it because Bob was such a. Wait, let me pause for a second and talk about Bob. Bob was. Uh, we were very stressed out. There was a lot of pressure from this big venue and these big bands to do everything and do this and do that. And, and we hired Bob as a sound guy, and he became weirdly like our spiritual leader um, in this journey of playing a large show. And he was uh, very like calm throughout. He had worked at the venue before. He knew the deal. He was very tall and very handsome and dressed in like leather and mysterious. He rode up in a motorcycle, and you know he had to. We had to ha have his helmet in our green room and. Um, you know, he just, he just, he just felt very reassuring to have Bob nearby and he helped us load our equipment and he was, and we found out he's a tattoo artist and he's, uh, you know, we looked, we immediately, we became infatuated with Bob. And so listening to Skull Shitter after like going down this, this, this man romance journey with Bob, uh, it's, it's, it's given, it adds another dimension to it. It's, you would just think it's like a. It's like a death metal band that clearly takes a lot of acid. Um, clearly. The lyrics make no sense. Um, and uh, the song, song titles are like, you know, auto, cannibal, phylistic, creep, um, struggle to die, you know. So it's a cheerful album. Uh, but it's, 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 it just adds another dimension because this guy Bob was so positive Relaxing, reassuring, helpful, 
and then he's in a band called Skull Shitter. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, and question, question from Paul. Question, question what, from you. What position does Bob play in the band? He's the drummer and a vocalist. They have multiple vocal vocalizers, so he's one of them. <laughs> Is it uh, like which lyrics did he write, or do you wanna? Can you just read some of those lyrics? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> They're not credited. The lyrics are not individually credited, as one would expect. It does come with a poster, which. You know, I think I've mentioned this before on unfair past episodes. I don't understand why bands include posters anymore, but it's like a giant. Oh, God, there's so many of those, right, these days? Huge posters. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I'm supposed to hang it up. I feel guilty for not hanging it up. I don't know. Hang it on uh, your daughter's wall. Maybe like you get a frame. Get a frame uh, at uh, Blick Art or something. Yeah, it's a good idea. These are all good ideas. Um <laughs> 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 you know what we just heard we just heard a little bit of like business arty <laughs> he's trying to get through a meeting these are all good ideas let's circle back on that okay Artie, let's idea. circle back on thank that thank you very much for your contribution uh, so <laughs> I appreciate you the record came out on I appreciate you <laughs> I hate that thing <laughs> been with us a long time and that's acknowledged. Um, Nerve Alter is the label. They put out um, Sea of Shit and some other bands. They're, they're sort of like in that nihilistic death metal and grindcore space, I guess. But uh, they're a Chicago-based label, but I've never met the dude. Cool. Um, but this is a New York band called called Skull Shitter. And um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really into it. I mean, it's, it's nothing earth-shattering. It just sounds like heavily, heavily hallucinogenic-influenced cool. death metal. So if that's uh, you know, if that rings any bells, then great. But it's it's it, it does the job. It checks all the boxes. I'll tell you what I like about that is that like uh, I have probably a majority of my, my the records and music that I own is just by people that I like. Hmm. Yes. And I wonder if like had I heard that not knowing those people, seeing their different journey or different path, or just hearing it, I'd be like, that's garbage. Um, I mean, like, yes. like let, let's the other half that I, of music that I have is garbage too. So, like, I'm I'm walking the line of like, it's a teeter totter of garbage, with maybe a little middle in between. But I'm just saying that, like, knowing those people like adds that yeah, element. Yeah, it changes and because of that. I'm gonna check out Skull Shitter because you're giving cool, um, right? this dude like props. Yeah, cool. I enjoy it. He's a great dude. Yeah, that, this is how my my mind worked on this. This is an insight into the mind of a maniac. But like, um, Charles had said, RKL, no yeah. effects, greatly influenced by RKL. Mm. No effects had a, a song called Bob. Artie talked about Bob. That's all I could think of for the last five <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> wow, that's an insight into the mind of a, of a maniac. Yeah. <laughs> Or what I, what I was thinking Bob. about, what I was thinking about, was yeah. that the band, this label Nerve Alter, um, has two bands on the label with shit in the name. So I'm wondering if we could start a band, the four of us, just have a four shit in the name and maybe be on the label. Sold. All right. Why not just call our band Shit in the Name? <laughs> yeah. Shit in the name. There you go. Shit. Man, that's, that's two cool. bands tonight. We've got. Um, go. Wait. Pill instructions and shit in the name. Pill instructions was two new came bands. before we were on air. <laughs> That's a good oh, never mind. No, was it? I don't know. God, it's it's all a blast. Right. I just forget like, what was what was on air and what wasn't it. Kind of stuff. Then I have nightmares about it. It's like Jesus, what the hell are we talking about in last night's episode? But that was like after the show stuff, right? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> round five, or as it's now known, the uh, the uh, Billy Joel round. Round five oh, of the show. Excellent. I don't know if you guys are in the way, nylon I... curtain round. <laughs> Before we get into that, the first time I met Artie oh, when okay. he toured with Garden Variety, he did tell me the first punk rock song that he ever heard was Pressure by Billy Joel. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Did I say the first or the most? Both. It's a great ah. nugget or a nugget. <laughs> the nugget. It's time with I'm the wearing one of those. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm I'm going in. I'm going in. I've been, you know, I've been meaning to show this one for like a couple of months, but I couldn't find a space for it on the show. But I'm going in tonight. I'm going in. Um, I'm not into like Italian. Like, was it the horror movie? Yeah, Giallo. 
giallo movies, right? The Italian, like, 70s, 80s, 90s, like, horror movies. I don't really know anything about those movies, but I do know that I like some of the soundtracks from those movies. Um, <laughs> Goblin, right? <laughs> Goblin. Oh, nice. Goblin. I'm not... This is like a... Uh, the build, This is the build-up to what I'm going to come to. So there's, there's this band, Goblin, right? Everybody knows Goblin, right? Goblin, the Suspiria soundtrack mm -hmm. with the Obi. <laughs> there you go. Goblin. Uh, Goblin. Profond Profondo Rosso. Or Suspiria 2, as it was called in Japan. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, great soundtracks by Goblin. And then Roller, which gets a little funky. I like the struggle too. Yeah, it gets kind of funky, right? It gets funky. Okay. Two E's. <laughs> Two E's. And no accordion. No accordion. Present. My point is, there's a kind of con contemporary band who love Goblin. And they might be better than Goblin because they're younger and they're heavier and they have like, I don't know, they're different. And they're on relapse records. And they have a lot of records. And they're great records, but I can't find most of the records. But I have this one, and I love this record, and I play it all the time. They're from Pittsburgh. They're a duo. Zombie. Okay. Oh, Zombie. yes, yes, yes. This is a great band. I chose this one because I only have two records by Zombie, and this is like the best looking. It looks best. It's like it Stingray. I'd buy that just by a cover alone. Stingrays mm -hmm. flying through the sky. The record's called Liquid Crystal. I don't know if it's going to work. It's it's uh, it's like blue vinyl, but like the center label, like kind of like, oh, it doesn't work. It kind of like shines. It's silver. It's like aluminium or something. So it's like when you play it, it kind of like emits beams from your record player when you when this record is spinning. It's like a mirror or like something. Wait, what's that one Sparks record that was like laser? I just don't have that too. Oh, I'm not sure. Like a center label like this? Oh, the center label. Oh, I was thinking. Yes, like, yeah. This is like blue vinyl, but like the center label, you can't. It doesn't work. Oh, it's like it's like it, opalescent, like a uh, abalone yeah. shell. Yeah, something like that. It's just like it shines when it's playing. Like it emits. That's beams, amazing. Right? Which That's is cool. Awesome. But this band is fucking great. It's like a two-piece band. They're kind of younger guys. But it's just like bass, guitar, drums, drums and synth. It's just they're a little bit heavy. It's ominous. It's dark, but like Goblin, they sometimes get a little bit like lighter. It's like soundtrack music, right? But they know how to like build an atmosphere and kind of get heavy and then tone it down a bit. <laughs> it's like it's amazing. Repetition and tension. 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 Are you? Are we, okay. <laughs> I think you're on a loop. <laughs> I, I was just repeating oh, repetition oh. and tension. And I love that. So yeah. Diane just wrote something. Do you know the band that she just referenced? Okay. <laughs> let me, let me, let me. I gotta pee. <laughs> Too much room. Ah, oh, okay. Necro Goblicon. That's a new one to me. In, but is yeah. that a real band? I is that I hope so. a combination of bands? Diane, is that a new band? Is that a real band? Wow. Yeah. There's a real band. I was hoping you were gonna mention Goblin Cock. Which was, oh, this is a real band. Goblin Cock is a whole different yes, kettle of fish. <laughs> you kept saying Goblin, and I'm like, is he going to say put up a new I Goblin Cock I actually do cock have a record? Goblin Cock picture disc actually oh, somewhere. Okay. But like, this band is fucking amazing. I, I wish I could find more of their records. If you look at it, sometimes people say like, they're like prog rock, and they're not really prog rock. It's like very like dark um like soundtrack music, but very captivating. Re really cool. Diane, Diane's saying they are a real band with a goblin okay. in the band. If that's a, <laughs> so, I don't know how that, how you would determine that. Is it? What would make someone a goblin? Well, you cut off a finger and then you, uh, uh, you count the rings to see how old it is. Got it. Um, how you do it? That's how you do it. So same with people. Um, so with, with that band though, is it instrumental? Is yes, it, good like, point. It's all instrumental. Oh. They have like a kind of driving rhythm section, like it never gets boring. There's like it's kind of song based as well, a little in a way. Uh, but it's like, okay, I don't like to do this, but like this is like what Relapse Records said about it. But it's like uh, synthscapes, driving rhythm section, uh, 
heavy grooves, Mangler. I mean, they have a song called Mangler. It's the Man- first song on the record, Mangler, which kind of like just sums them up. It's like, it's ominous. It's kind of dark. It's foreboding. It's just really, really great band from Pittsburgh who are still active, you know, so you can go and see them play. And I, I will tell you this, like mm-hmm. Pittsburgh is one of my favorite American cities. There you go. <laughs> it's a That's really awesome. weird city. Uh, Mike, if you've ever been there, it's pretty incredible. Great record stores. It's got the uh, it's got the landscape of San Francisco, but it's got the blue collarness of like Detroit. Right. Um, it's a great. Maybe there's a, a little bit town. of Pittsburgh in here. It's great record kind of stores. Also like gritty, and dark, and foreboding, and ominous. And I can um, see that. I can recommend this record to like anybody really. And it just looks. That uh, band uh, Cost of Christ are from there. Uh, they are. There's yeah. lots of great there. <laughs> Um, the pissed they're from pittsburgh too the pissed the pissed there's a lot of great bands half-life zombie half-life yes but people have told me like they're amazing life they pull it off live even though they're like a two-piece they got they deliver the goods in a live situation so so it's a drummer and a guitar player yeah 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 and he does the synths and stuff too so yeah. it's not like a, a drummer and an accordion player pulling it off unfortunately off. not maybe if no, they're that's, watching this they might uh they might that's consider Peter playing Panties. one in from, from it's the not egg album. doom <laughs> egg doom <laughs> egg doom <laughs> there you go it's great great zombie Liquid Crystal from a couple of years ago. This is an EP, but it's like it's 35 minutes long. So in my universe, that's an LP. So there you go. Yeah. You listen to them a lot in the van. They're, they're, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I like cool, cool. Yeah. Nice. I don't own anything by them, though, but maybe. They're I'll kind of hard to get over here. I've got like a, another album by them, but like, yeah, they're kind of hard to get. I don't know. Relapse, reissue them, get on it. I'm growing more and more into the like, not like. Uh, like f- like fractions of percentage points, like point zero zero two into just like having instrumental soundscape stuff periodically. So like <laughs> once a year, I'll just need to not hear somebody yelling some shit. And like the balance of that might be like the Cockatoo Twins or just Elizabeth Fraser's like going the gibberish Cockatoo over twins? some sort of music. But like, um, yeah, yeah. Blind- b- before me hearing about that band uh i was just blind idiot god is the only band i was interested in that was just instrumental i mean you know it can get a little boring this band like never <laughs> boring. they always kind of keep it moving you know they have a good a drama that propels things along it's very yeah. very captivating good band all right charles follow up zombie before my fifth pick i would mention him because i know already mentioned it twice Artie's band opened for dark angel last week to- <laughs> <laughs> but they, i didn't did not know that Oh, just, <laughs> he had mentioned it twice. I just wanted, I didn't, in case he didn't mention it a third time. I haven't mentioned Prong. Okay. Oh, you did not oh. mention Prong. Um, mention so Prong. I'm, I'm breaking all the rules here. I'm, I'm not, and because That's I'm not going to talk about a record now, um, but I'm going to talk about, uh, it's going to tell us that's each other. Um, oh, man, I don't have I don't have the same rule about this format. Of the story. So, uh, um, and I'm gonna uh, on the second break of the rule, I'm gonna talk about two things. So it's actually two picks. Um, these two books came out about their fanzine um, compilations. One bullshit monthly from New York City, and one is sold out fanzine from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Um, say Detroit, just fucking say Detroit. It's all about Detroit. it's all about fucking Detroit. Like just say so, Detroit. From Detroit. We'll talk about this one first. Bullshit monthly. I can't even fit it in the screen. Um ah, it's in there. I can see it. There it is. It's yeah. a Mike Mike Bullshit, uh, who sang for uh at the time SFA and uh later on Go did a one double-sided one sheet fanzine that he would sell for a quarter and then due to inflation eventually 50 cents i believe um in front of cbgb's Sell out. and by the way compiled. It's not affordable though. if he if he so had to go up very affordable his cost why can't you just raise your shit from 515 to like like even back mike to bullshit this, back to this that's book. his last name that's his given back name his parents crossed the seas with the last name <laughs> bullshit and you can't even raise from 15 to 25 and had a great 
Mike had a great writing style. Everything is handwritten. Um, it just a kind of a snapshot of what uh, what fanzines were like uh, back in the late mid late eighties. Uh, I, I think maybe even into the early 90s. Yeah, 90, 1991, 84 to 91. Um, it's on Shining Life Press. They've been doing a lot of like uh, reissues of uh, comp compiling old fanzines. Um, and then Sold Out. Sold Out was a Detroit fanzine uh, done by a guy named Otto Budge, Budge, B-U-J. Uh, I... I remember buying this when it came, all the fanzines when it came, when they came out. Um, lots of interviews with uh, Rollins Band, uh, Fugazi, uh, No For An Answer, Cro-Mags, White Zombie, Laughing Hyenas. And all right, we'll go back onto the record. I did not listen to this record. It comes with the uh, flexi. Okay. It comes right. with the flexi bit of Pitbull and the band I. Um, I refuse to listen to a band called Pitbull. Uh, I always have. I've got records by them. Detroit Hardcore. I saw them with Bad Religion for, on the Suffer Tour. Wow. Okay. Oh, it's a flexi. I'll give it to you but, next time. But I also see. don't. Like, I'm not saying you need to. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, don't but, listen to it. But uh, both of these books are incredibly well done. Um, they're very, uh, uh, they're, and uh, they're snapshots in the 80, mid 80s to mid 90s uh, of two different scenes, New York and Detroit. Um, cool. Also, uh, Artie's band opened for Dark Angel last week. <laughs> we get to that. I was just wondering if Ready for Death had you know, ever opened up for uh, Dark Angel. But I was reminded of yeah. Mike Bullshit's great handwriting because I did a little bit of trading with him back in those days and I did get a letter from him. Yes, very then. easy to recognize. Very easy to recognize. Yes. So you had the handwriting thing and the book thing. And I was think, thinking, I know another guy that has like good handwriting. Uh, that's Dick Lucas from the Subhumans. And the Subhumans have a new book out too. So there's... Do they? Okay. There you go. Just to... Uh, that's, that's what I was thinking about when you mentioned handwriting and books. Uh, <laughs> punk books. <laughs> that's... So, so yeah, Subhumans. Books. Books are a big thing now. There's a lot of books coming out, right? About like scenes and like... Um, and I, yeah, but be careful. For those two. Yeah. Be careful. Be yeah, careful. Just, like, I got a book and I'm not going to say what it was. because well, I was might, like, oh, You might get a paper cut or something. Go on. <laughs> yes. There, there was a book I got recently. I was like, oh, I thought this was going to be a, a deep dive into this thing that I was curious about. And then, like, I got it. I'm like, yeah, I'll pay 30 bucks for this. Uh, a reputable artist. 30 cover. bucks. I Charles like the book. I liked the book. It was fine. But then I was just like, oh, this is like, hey, first time I heard this band. It was awesome. I'm like, what? Like, this isn't, this is like a bad book written. This is just like a weird, like, fan thing of like dream journals of like, the one time I saw this band, it was great. And now I want to make a book about it. And here's a chapter on this band I like. Like, everybody could write, everybody here, everybody that's ever been on your show and everybody watching. And plus, my daughter right now could write a book about like, like four pages about like I like this band because like they mentioned this and that and it's yeah. really cool. And so, I just want a cautionary tale. The bullshit book, out there. monthly, amazing. The Windsor thing, like amazing. Also, I have those issues. Just be careful, people. Be careful out there with books. Careful of books. <laughs> be careful of books. Be careful of of books. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm not like into like burning books or anything like that, but, but you got to be careful. Books, you, you can make be better fuel than shouldn't. Oh, mm -hmm. actually, that's a good one. Wayne, Wayne Kramer book, The Hard Stuff. I haven't read it yet. Looks good. Yeah. There you go. I got so, Jer Jerry A books. I got all three of them. I haven't. I got those, those two. I haven't read them yet. I haven't right. read them yet, but I got them. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. I feel like that kind of stuff is going to be curated, uh, but there's also this like pounce on like hey i'm gonna write a book about like things i like and then it's just like they they like write down a fucking list of things they like and some of them correspond with things that i like so then i like oh yeah i'm gonna buy that book yeah. like you just wrote about shit you like yeah i did start reading the jerry one i got there yeah, i got all three of these i, I think these nice. are gonna be i feel oh, like hey. i have a stack of books like this so, that i, I will not ever get time to read yeah, yeah right but i keep buying them 
All right. I should be more careful, like Paul advises. Yes, be careful. But, <laughs> mm. All right, Paul. Sorry, Paul, you're, yeah. Paul, Paul, you're next. Today. Do you guys like my shirt? Uh, the, I don't know what it is. It's a lower it. leisure class. Oh. oh, you have a record by that band. This is my cup. They transpose them th their own faces on the outsiders. Oh. And that's what I'm going to talk about. This is, oh, on, oh man, it's a cassette. Cool. Hold on. This is available on LP and cassette. And I have this both on LP and cassette. The LP is still in storage because of the divorce and things I've mentioned previously. <laughs> However, I also bought it on cassette so I could listen to it at my home. This only is a cassette player at your home. Wait, what? You only have a cassette player at your home? I have a record player too, but the records I have are like post uh divorce and storage of all the records. So so I only play things that I have since right. that aren't in storage. Anyway, oh. so <laughs> well, this is the lower leisure class record. Nope, wrong finger. They made it seem like one of those cassettes that you can buy for a penny and get 10 of them also. So not only could you get this and like Dokken and Gafria and Loverboy and Journey oh. for a penny, they made it look like those old, oh, yeah. which I appreciate. Uh, it's folks from old West Michigan bands, not old, mid-90s, uh, the Sinatras who used to play with the Latin Dogs and uh, I think may have even played with the big boys. Um, the Slee Stacks, King Tammy, um, Fortune and Maltese, all of those bands, they're all grown men now. And they have this band called the Lower Leisure Class. And their songs are not only just about Michigan and have graduated past a style of songwriting that I don't quite understand, but catchy as hell. The first song on the album, um, Activate Summer, starts out quirky and disjointed, almost um, Devo-esque, or maybe I should say egg punk, <laughs> egg punk. Yes. for those still following along. Um, and then breaks into this chorus of like, it's fucking summer, man, and you don't know the difference. And it's just great. It just hits you. This isn't a hardcore record. It's not um, a mod power pop record. It's not any other record than to just like have something to put on and just feel good about things. It's Ooh. it's a song. It's a record about people who have four seasons in their life and know that January is coming and it's going to be cold. There's also songs about summer. And it, I can't not play it almost every day. Partially because it bonks between like sort of like thin Lizzie-esque tunes oh, to um, replacements style perfectness to the other side of that of just Husker Du style, like uh, Could You Be The One style songs. It follows the gambit of all of the bands they've been in. Cause some of the bands like King Tammy was like Bud Honey, but goofy. The Sinatras was Husker Du. Uh, the Slee Stacks were kind of bonkers with glitter shooting cannons all over the place. Uh, Fortune of Maltese, all of these Kalamazoo bands, you get all of these mines in one hive and you produce the perfect honey. And uh, they're very Midwest songs. Um, there's no hardcore, there's no death metal there's definitely some creepy tones to some of the songs so anybody looking for the creepiness i guess like get that out there but it's it's a michigan lake centric album uh, available on cassette they have t-shirts they have mugs, mugs. <laughs> they have mugs man I, I was entranced by that. I was like, I need this record. Yeah. He the he upped the marketing game by like 150 percent. Yeah. If you ever can get this record and you'll put it on, you everybody here will probably dislike it the first listen. Okay. 
but it, within a couple of weeks, you'll realize that there's been things in your head that have, you've been humming along to you. Then you'll put it on again. And then you'll start to feel the theme of these old school, hardcore kids. Like mm. you're talking, when I say old school, I'm like 90s? 83, 84, 85, okay. you're like Latin dogs era, like coming up and like friends for all of this time are now in a band together and they've got real lives of people who have things to deal with. It's just such a glorious thing. I, I can tell that you're, you're really into this record. Yeah. By the way you're talking about it, I can feel it. Cause it's fucking summer, man. And you don't know <laughs> the difference <laughs> in the United States. Like when it's summer, like, Artie knows this. Charles knows this. Like, once it starts getting warm, you feel it. It's different. It's fucking summer, man. I mean, you guys might be blown away by this. And I, I mean, I, I hope you're sitting down for this. We actually have four seasons in Japan as well. No. Because <laughs> it's, no. it's, it's fucking summer. I'm just saying, like, it, it's home. Yeah. yeah. No, it's no, funny. Because, no, I'm. Is there like that. eight people in the band? I think they have like a dulcimer. It's ridiculous, man. It's. Uh, I, think I, need it. <laughs> I think Ready for Death should come and play here with them. Well, it's interesting. We were just in New York opening for Dark Angel. Uh, really? Yeah, I'm gonna mention it. <laughs> well, here's a quick yeah. get out. Did you get? Did you get any autographs? Um, nobody, we can get anything. I mean, Bob's, Bob's, Bob's no, I mean, did you have to sign any on Dark Angel? <laughs> oh, we tried, but they kept running away and saying, stop. <laughs> um, no, I noticed that in New York, there was the, I haven't been to New York, um, for any length of time in, uh, over 10 years, but, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, we spent, a, we spent a little bit walking around before we drove home and it was like, oh yeah, this is what that feels like that weird summery feeling mm. where everything everything feels a little more possible and like you know whatever versus like you know the other 10 months of the year where you're like i, I wish i was dead no it's funny i was joking around but i get asked that question like all the time like you know mike sensei and mike do you have like four seasons in your country too because the four seasons are like a, a, a big big thing in japan so it's like um, yep we literally have names for them no. But are they reversed? Okay. Is your summer our winter? No, because I don't know. I don't I mean, know. You know are you talking about Japan or the UK? Yeah, Japan. Japan. No, no, same. Well, it goes oh, by okay. like a it goes by equator, not by time. No, I don't think he meant weather. <laughs> yes, I, yes I, my I summer is nine hours ahead already. of yours. You literally <laughs> have a globe in back of you. I don't know where things are. Already, <laughs> do you call the cold months summer <laughs> and the hot months yeah. winter? <laughs> um. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. One quick thing. They have a song right. called like Come January that if like oh man, Artie, you would love this fucking song. It's so yeah, sad and so Chicago, Michigan. It's just the saddest, most perfect, awesome song. Cool. Mm. Anyway, Go speaking of sadness, song. let's get on to um Yes. Uh, uh, the Artie's last pick. pick of the day. The last pick of the day. Let's oh. make it count. Oh wait, are we on round five? Oh, it's your last oh, Please, it's wait, please the let end this be Escape Grace. <laughs> hey, by the way, for the longest time, I thought that Artie sang for Escape Grace. I wish. I have no idea why. I just made I that totally up in my head. That dude. Yeah, I totally tried to be that dude, but I could not, could not harness that level of insanity, literal insanity. Um, all right, wait. So on the last pick, the last pick. Yeah. Nobody's watching anymore at this point. So it doesn't oh, they, oh, they are. They are. They are. They are. <laughs> so <great. laughs> it's peak time in Japan. Charles might not even make it through this one with his connection. Um, I'm in a remote yeah. part of the world called New Jersey. I, we don't have no. a lot of internet stuff here. Heard of it. Never been there. Can't prove it exists. Uh, yeah. Most talented musician to walk the planet. Who do you think? Yingwe Malmsteen. Alive or dead? Yingwe J. Malmsteen. <laughs> Paul, who do you think? Most Paul talented geographically musician to walk the planet. Yes. Um, other than myself. Other than myself? Yeah. Assume you're not included. Gloria Estefan? 
It's close. Oh. Kate Bush. Prince. Prince. He's Artie, have you been? Ha, have you been there? Have you been to Paisley Park, Artie? I have not. I I really would like to go. It's it um, will fucking break your heart. You will cry. Sure. Anyway, go I've ahead. heard. I've heard all sorts of stories. Uh, we're you know like I've been a Prince fan since I was a teenager. Um, really? but we we've been talking about him a lot in in the band, and uh, it, it, he he's just like we he's just like holds this uh huge cast of looming shadow over like a lot of stuff so I, I happen to grab this record and it's one of the coolest records i've ever bought this is um uh his originals record so it's double lp um and it's i think it's mostly if not all the songs he's wrote for other people i don't know i haven't done a lot of like back-end research but it's his, it's his originals his versions of the songs that other people have made hits out of. So like Morris Day in the Time and Sheila E and Sinead O'Connor. And apparently what he would do is uh, um, record the song as he envisioned it being recorded and do the vocal parts. And then he would tell the person, I wrote, I've written this song for you, sing this way. And they would have to sing and mimic his voice as close as they could. And then they added on some effects and then it became the single. So you'll hear his versions of like, um glamorous life the sheila e hit and it's like almost like the original but there's like a few a few layers missing like it's, it's basically a demo version but it's amazing i've listened to it uh i i, I sold a bunch of crap i did a purge got rid of a lot of hell's headbanger stuff uh that i've been building up and sold it and then i got a bunch of records in trade and this was one of the records i got i just grabbed it right i saw it sticking out and i grabbed it right off the front of the rack and uh, I've been listening to it constantly to to the point where uh, I'll be like at home listening to it. And my wife will walk in and say like, like how much cocaine have you done? You know, <laughs> I haven't done any. But it sounds like <laughs> <laughs> based on nineteen eighties era of Prince. Uh, and it's 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 uh, it's a great record. Like like it's it's two LPs. Song "Sex Shooter" has the immortal line: "Sex Shooter, I'm shooting love in your direction." So what's that about? Is that covered like, by Spinal Tap? <laughs> it's about gardening. It's like a metaphor for gardening. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Jungle Love, you know, um, which was another. Is Manic, in the Manic time. Monday? I think I heard the Monday version on that. It was really awesome. Is Manic oh, Monday? Yeah, it actually is. It's great. Yeah, he does Manic Monday, which was the Bangles single, and it's his original that he probably showed to Susanna Hobbs and said, "Sing this way," and it's fucking great. And, I heard an know, interview I'm, with her where I think she said that she he just wanted her to sing over his, his like backing tracks, and she was like, "I don't know oh. that we could pull that off." So like, had to convince him to let the band like replay it. That's that's probably that you know it seems likely he was like oh, wild yeah. like you know. So here's like, a weird thing: like if you go to Paisley Park, like all of his songs like all of the hits all of the shit that charles apparently wanted to like hey susanna hop <laughs> drop them on <laughs> <laughs> remember that little brown eyed vixen from that video clunk then like <laughs> fucking split oh no he's back we can um, keep charles there now we don't need to move him around anymore <laughs> so uh yeah he's uh, the prince sang all of his songs all of the hits everything like yeah. sitting down like at his board right he was never standing at the mic he would like sing all of that shit and just like mix and sing Damn. i have so many anything. things I about you. yes so you know like the nothing compares to you mm -hmm. i love that song yeah. I, so there was never a prince version of that until now is that correct yeah i think this was the this oh, might have been right. the first lp that it was released on wow. i think that they released that after he died as like Whoever got control of his estate, like, let a few recordings out, and it was such a hit that they built this album around that. Gotcha. So, and it and it's great. It's great to hear him say. I mean, I mean, I'm a. I don't know if I've ever talked about Sinead O'Connor on the show, but the next time I'll have to because I'm constantly I'm like a huge Sinead O'Connor freak. Yeah. But uh, his uh, his version of it is amazing. Just like 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 it's you hear it, you hear it the ideas you know as they were right. formed. By the way, that video of her just singing that, just her face, was oh, good. just yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. she was just like nobody understood her. She was like too people just couldn't like understand what she was doing. Not to kind of derail the conversation from Prince, but like Well, I don't know. Uh, Team Drash like wrote that song about like her. But I think it's, it's CR it's, covered. We could talk, we could, you know, we could do a whole episode on Shane O'Connor's very talk for a long time, and nobody would be interested. It was yeah. very limited. Was like, nobody understood how she was like. <laughs> well, what was that? That was Charles my was like voice one, coming out like 25 seconds later after I'd said it on Charles' uh, computer. But that, I remember that Sinead O'Connor in that song, like, I was like, I couldn't. I couldn't watch the video. It was just like too intense. Like, oh, it's too much. Just her face, yeah. like, have you seen that? Like, you're yelling at me and she, the, like those green eyes and just the, uh, the black background. Uh, I was, nah, have you seen that video of her when she's at the, some music awards and she gives like the speech about like something and then like everybody's like booing her and then Chris Christopherson comes on and like comforts her and like supports her? It's yeah. in New York. Wait, wait Chris Christopherson? Yeah. 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 He was the only one that kind of like. Got behind, you know, supported her. So it yeah, because him and Barbra yeah. Streisand had a great thing she was, going. She was about to cover a Bob Dylan song, and they, uh, it was a bunch. Of, it was at Madison Square Gardens. It was a bunch of dildos from Long Island and New Jersey, probably more New Jersey than Long Island. Um, and they were just like they just freaked. They were booing her because of what she had done on Saturday Night Live and terrible right. picture of the Pope. Meanwhile, yeah. half of these people have probably been molested by priests and had the priests no. relocated. So, um, are we still it's, on? It's yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, I could talk a lot about Shane O'Connor. Let well, me say it was probably more like three quarters, but like, yeah. 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 There you go. Um, so, Prince, originals, I think, uh, yeah, there's, there's like a couple of clunkers on here where he gets into the Jehovah's Witness stuff, where he starts singing about like, uh, there's a song called Thy Will Be Done. And uh, you know you get a little like eye rolly with that, but 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 I'd say like eighty percent of this record is is gold. I've been listening to it a lot. Like it's just great around the house stuff hey. that repulse my entire family, and, uh, and you know it's it, it, it's just really feel good music. It's it's Prince. Already, lose already with the, by the end of this year, you should make a point to go to Minneapolis and go to Paisley Park. I really want to, but I've heard it's, it's anything like just to like hear. Like his story and like his journey through like vegetarianism and veganism and just like how pure like his parties were and like all of that stuff. And don't take cabs, like try and take Ubers and stuff because everybody in Minneapolis has after like our age, like maybe like 40s and up or they everybody you get in a car with has like, yeah, that guy used to ride my bus. Like you give me a demo tape. I was like, who's this fucking guy going to be He's like? Oh, I just heard that raspberry song that guy gave me a tape of kind of thing. Like <laughs> everybody in Minneapolis has a story. He's like, yeah, like he'd come into my he like at my grocery store, this and that. He'd ride his bike by, like he invited my daughter to go watch Nemo kind of thing. Yeah. Like it's, uh, it's, Paul. It's, it's there's a purity Paul, to it. Is is the basketball court a true story? Is that Charlie Murphy's story true? All of it is true. You can get awesome. on the basketball court. Yeah. Awesome. And here's the weirdest thing that when I went there, um, there are just a couple of restrooms. So like if you go there and you piss, right? You're like everybody that's got a gold and platinum record on this wall also pissed here. <laughs> Same with the, you know, and but that's it sounds like a it sounds like a dumb thing to think about, but like, no, not at all. but, but also like grounding at the same point, it's like, these are the bathrooms. Like this is where you go. Right. And it was just like remarkable. If you think everybody that passed through that studio and everybody that did everything, same with the women's uh, uh, bathroom, same thing. Sinead O'Connor, anybody that recorded there, peed or shit in that bathroom any dude that recorded there pissed or shit in that bathroom and so i don't know it was just that was the most leveling thing to me and also the <laughs> which is weird the second part there was uh, um he still has the pink what's weird is mike part. thought he was a maniac before <laughs> and i think you are the maniac <laughs> uh, i i have a story <laughs> 
<laughs> I was just going to say, I, I'm thinking of wrapping this episode up. We'll continue in, like, because I, we were talking about bathrooms, talking about, like, you know, like, oh, yeah, million, no, yeah. multi million record selling artists, like, peeing in your, the, the bathroom. Mm -hmm. The bassist of Warhead once peed in my bathroom. Okay, so wrap like yourself up. I'll tell you guys about I'd the like master to, basin room. Yes. So I'd like to visit there <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Man. We started off with Romanian ice metal. We finished off with Prince. <laughs> we we ran the gamut or the gamut, the, the gamut, the gamut. Mm -hmm. uh, We covered all bases. It was a great episode. I had, two hours went by way too quickly. Peter Panties. Peter Panties. <laughs> never forget. Never forget. Never. What's the date? <laughs> never forget June tenth or June 9th, two thousand twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> all right let me just let me let, let me just announce like next week's show I got one more young, post oh, i got some young people coming on next week young <laughs> people young people under 40 maybe actually no they're 14 they're, they're not all under 40 oh, patrick 40. i thought he said 14 40 <laughs> <laughs> Patrick from Destruct, I think he's under 40. Uh, Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records, I think he's over 40. Um, Tom from General Speech, borderline 38 years old. It's going to be a good episode, young people. I don't, I don't like the line you're drawing here. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's, it's marketing. <laughs> Shit. We'll finally have young people on this show. Young, young people. <laughs> some, kids, some kids coming on next week. <laughs> All right, that was a great episode. Let's wrap it up. I think we're probably going to keep talking about Prince and oh. Bill Florio's wedding video after I <laughs> stop. <laughs> after we stop the episode rolling. So until next time, stay healthy. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Diane, why won't you come on? Diane yeah, needs to come like, on. Of all people, yes. she should come on. I mean, after seeing tonight's episode, surely. Until next time, stay healthy and stay. <laughs>